Hey everyone, Scott Hansen here from NFL Red Zone. I hope you're checking out one hour of Five Yard Rush, one of the best podcasts on NFL football in the Yo, UK. Yo, what's happening, Rush Nation? We're back. Super Bowl's done. Welcome to the offseason. I would say it was a relief, but I just don't know if it is. No, I mean, for some of us, the offseason, there's been... Well, one point Tampa were two and six. So although technically not the off-season, it was nigh. So really, some of us have been off-season mode since, like, Thanksgiving. So but to those of you that played in the Super Bowl in the postseason, welcome to the off-season. Thank you. It's the most exciting time of the year. I mean, we didn't play any of the things you just mentioned, but I feel like now is actually the off-season. You've got to remember, all the teams are 0-0. You've got a whole summer, spring, autumn of dreams to come ahead. Every team is equal now. No one's better than the other. I know the Chiefs won the, the Super Bowl, but you know, that was last season. It's done. So now the Bengals are as good as the Chiefs. Correct. Excellent news. <laughs> that is how we roll. <laughs> that's the NFL 365. So if that's true, then the draft should just be completely randomised in order. No, 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 no. You've got to have the draft because that's how you make it even. But I mean, through the dreams, I mean, <laughs> the San Francisco 49ers proved last season that you can be picking at the top of the draft one year, you're playing in the Super Bowl. Less than a year, like nine months later. Okay. So everyone can hold on to that dream. Right? Okay. Okay. Well, Rush Nation, as you imagine, it's, uh, it's been one hell of a ride through the season. And we've got a show for you today, which is a repeat. Last year, we did the 32-team mock draft where people dialed in. We even had some random toothless guy from Kansas drop us a line. And <laughs> I... I <laughs> I don't even remember what he said because I couldn't understand him here anymore. <laughs> it was just a mission to get him on. But he did manage to come on. Everyone laughed at him. He made a pick and then left. So that was fun. And we're doing it again. And uh, I'm not quite sure how many people we've got on this time. I think it's 20. I think it's 28. 28 different voices. 27 or 28. Well, let's go for 28 because if it's. Yeah. Let's scale up. Yeah, scale up. <laughs> okay. Do you want to start? Should we start? I think we should officially declare the Five Yard Rush 2020 Mock Draft 1.0 officially open. Ring the, there isn't a bell, but if there's there was, we'd have rung it. Ding, ding. Okay. How's this going to work, Matt? So how this is going to work, we have fans from all over the UK. Uh, everyone is UK-based for this one, just to make it a little bit easier. Um, we'd be picking through the official order as it stands today for the NFL draft. All seven rounds. One round. Oh, damn it. <laughs> we don't have like nine hours to do this. Um, you think it would only take nine hours? <laughs> that is speculative. Yeah, I, I, I am being speculative. Um, 32 teams in this. However, having said that, the teams not picking in this draft are Pittsburgh Steelers, the Chicago Bears, the LA Rams, and the Houston Texans. Those four teams traded out of their picks. Um, and have given them to other teams, mostly Miami um, and Vegas. <laughs> That's right, Las Vegas are now in the league uh, instead of the Oakland Raiders. That didn't so officially happen yesterday, right? That happened a few weeks ago. But yeah, they're officially the Las Vegas Raiders now. I'm um, definitely going to get that wrong. Yeah, you are. So you have to pay attention. <laughs> so those four teams won't be picky. If you're fans of those teams, you just have to figure out. There's no trades in this mock. It's just going to be straight uh, as the order runs. And yeah, we might as well get this uh, show on the road. And we've got our first uh, GM in waiting. We have. So picking first, if you don't know and have been living under a rock, is the Cincinnati Bengals. And their GM for today is Adam from Touchdown Tips. Adam, welcome to Five Yard Rush. Hello, gents. How are you doing? Good, man. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. Obviously, quite nice having the first pick. I don't really have to do much thinking or paying attention to anything else for the rest of the night now. Yeah, that's it. You were on uh, You were on last year. Do you remember who you picked uh, last year? Um, I went for Ed Oliver last year for the Bengals, which probably would have been better than picking someone who got injured in pre-season. Yeah. Mind you, Ed Oliver went a bit higher, didn't he? Um, did he go a little bit higher? I thought I took him last oh, year. Oh, the Bills. That's right. Oh, oh, yeah, in real life. Sorry, in real life. I thought you meant in, um, in the mark. Yeah, in, um, in real life, he went to the Bills, I think, what, two picks ahead yeah. the Bengals? Um, and we, in fairness, we took the right position. We needed offensive line. He just got injured because that's what happens to Bengals players. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's hope it doesn't happen to uh, who you're about to name as the first pick. In the yeah, it's, it's sorry. Right? Yeah, it's um, it's quite depressing looking at the draft network page you got up here, looking at the team needs because it's pretty much every position. <laughs> uh, so you would think we can't go wrong. 
And uh, we're definitely not going to take any risks with the pick. It's the one that everyone expects. It's, uh, it's Joe Burrow, quarterback from LSU. Joseph Burrow, quarterback, LSU, is selected for the Bengals. Why, why Joe Burrow? Why... Uh... Why he's, to... he's set all the records in college. We um we obviously could do with a new franchise quarterback. We need to reignite the fan base. Uh, the dwindling attendances. Everyone's getting annoyed and bored. And obviously the 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 uh, narrative around Andy Dalton is obviously that he can't take the team to the next level. So we're getting a new hot young thing, uh, smoking Joe Burrow. Obviously, if you've ever all seen the pictures after his amazing win in the title game. Uh, that title game, he finished with uh, six touchdowns. Uh, it was the most um, – oh, I can't even remember my stats now. I messed this right up, haven't I? Yeah, it was um, the most offensive yardage in one game by a team. He finished with six touchdowns in it. Uh, but that wasn't even his most impressive game of the season. It was the week before where he got seven touchdowns in the first half against Oklahoma, uh, 403 yards. He led the LSU team to the most points in a college season. He got 91% of the Heisman votes. He um, threw eventually for 5,671 yards, which is the third of all time. He threw for the most touchdowns in the FBS history. He, annoyingly, he lost his um, all-time pass completion percentage in that title game because he missed 10 of them. But he, um, yeah, he was the best quarterback in college last year. So we're going to pair him up with our young head, uh, head coach and see how it goes going forward. Yeah, absolutely. So the one thing I guess we didn't say at the top of the show was uh, this is a 1.0 because we're all going to come back again and do this the week before the draft. And uh, barring some kind of injury <laughs> yeah. or combine mishap or personal anecdote that comes out that will shatter his dreams, I'm pretty confident this will be the pick when we speak in two months' time. I do not think things will change too much, as you say, barring some tragic injury. Um, even then, <laughs> the Bengals will probably still take him. Um, he's uh, also an Ohio native, so he's coming back to his home state if, uh, when we select him. Yeah, that's right. So what you're saying is with some clever editing, we can just trim bits of this and throw it in next time. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. You won't need me for the next one. We'll just um, mix it up a bit, switch all this stuff around, take out the bits that I got wrong, put in some bits I'll get right. Nah. And uh, yeah, just use it all again. It's always good to, to have you on. Why don't you tell everyone where you, where you are, where they can find some of your work and, and tune in to not just Bengals, but also uh, some of the outstanding work you do to help uh, put money in people's pockets as well. Yeah, um, I am Adam Walford. I run touchdowntips.com, tdtips.com, and I'm at touchdowntips on Twitter, unsurprisingly. I uh, do game previews all season long um, with, betting, with a few betting tips on it. Uh, the season wasn't fantastic. We still made a bit of money. Um, I did say the Super Bowl would be won by the Chiefs, and I did say 35-24, so I had the 11-point margin, just uh, a little bit higher scoring than expected. Uh, but yeah, um, quite enjoy doing it, obviously. It's a nice bit of fun. And I do uh, a podcast with Full 10 Yards, who I believe you've got one of them on at least later on. Oh no, at least, yep. Three. Uh, two, th two or three of them on later. So uh, yeah, I'm part of that gang as well. Yeah, that's right. So you had uh, Jake Kummer to get a – no, Jay Sternberger to get a touchdown in the a NFC title game, didn't you, at 40 Yeah, one. yeah, 40 to 1 with his, I think, second or third catch of the entire season. Yeah. It was, uh, yeah, obviously a long shot, but the odds were good, and he had been getting involved a lot more recently uh, towards the end of the season, so I thought it was worth a pump. There you go. Well, a chance of a slightly longer odd shot from coming in. Uh, Adam's the guy that will nail them more often than not, so make sure you follow him. And thanks for yeah. coming on. Good pick from the Bengals and uh, good luck and look forward to it in two months' time. Cheers, guys. Enjoy the rest of the draft. Thanks very much, buddy. Right, moving on. Let's head to Washington with the second pick of the draft. He's from full 10 yards. It's Lawrence. Lawrence, welcome to Five Yard Rush. How are you doing? Pretty good, pretty good. I had a couple of wins um, from the Super Bowl. I got the first touchdown scorer being Patrick Mahomes. I got 28 to 1 on that so I was pretty happy and then right at the very end of the game I got the correct colour of the Gatorade at six to one so yeah desperate times desperate measures but yeah the the, the chief sideline staff did me did me a good job there filling the bucket with orange Gatorade <laughs> I love that so uh 
You'll hear the pick on behalf of the Redskins. Uh, interesting season last year. I mean, you had a... What was... Well, if you call going 3-13 and 13 interesting, then by all means, come and we'll swap teams. <laughs> I just thought I'll, I'll call it tragic, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, but you, you had a very good draft last year, getting your quarterback for the future um, and trading back up and getting Montez Sweat. Um, you know, it, it, and then obviously Terry McLaurin, who arguably is in, based on his rookie performance, the top two wide receivers to come out of the draft last year. So things are slightly brighter than perhaps you're painting. But um, what are your hopes for, for 2020? I'm not, I'm, I'm not 100% convinced that Dwayne Haskins is the, the future of the Redskins in terms of the quarterback position. And saying that, I'm not, I'm not going to be drafting a quarterback in a second. But I think Haskins has got to, he's, he's got to get into game pace He's, he's, he's not in the game pace at the moment. I was watching him. He took far too many sacks. Yes, he was put into an awkward position um, coming in with no prospects. But this is a guy who I think he, he just needs to just get quicker. His mind needs to be quicker. And hopefully by chucking him in as a rookie, he's got that experience now to know what to do in season two. So I'm not overly optimistic but I'm hoping he does better than his rookie performance where he, he did the old sort of deer in the headlights quite a lot of the time. To be, yeah, I, I think it's tough as well when you lose your head coach, but this will be the year he's judged on. Um, and if he doesn't tend to do the job, then, you know, we know what you'll be picking in the first round next year. But that is a year away. Let's concentrate on the here and now. Who are the Washington Redskins selecting with the second pick of the five-yard rush? Uh, we, we, we will be going with a 20-year-old criminology major and edge rusher by the name of Chase Young. Chase Young to the Redskins. Again, nothing too unsurprising, but why did you go with uh, Chase Young here? He is a freakish athlete and being a teammate of Nick Bosa and seeing what Nick Bosa managed to achieve in just his first season and getting all the way to the Super Bowl, he, he helped completely lift a defence that had been, you know, the, the Redskins have followed a similar model to the 49ers, drafting high in terms of defensive linemen, edge rushers, for the last couple of years and now it's the chance to add that absolute key piece into the into the defense and this is a guy who in his um third season at, at the um, at the Ohio State 16 and a half sacks despite missing two games for receiving um some money from his relatives and the 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 list of awards that he got was ridiculous the, the Chuck Bednarik Award, the Ted Hendricks Award, the Bronco Nagursi Trophy, the Nagursi Woodson Defensive Player of the Year, the Smith Brown Defensive Lineman of the Year, unanimous All American, first team All Big Ten. Just, just absolutely crazy. And it's, you know, you have to have a quality defense to win games. And our problem was for the Redskins that it just, we, we just kind of we, we ran out of steam. We had a, a terrible, terrible run defence. We were 31st in the league, allowing 146 yards rushing a game, 27 against the pass, um, sorry, 18th against the pass, 27th defence overall, allowing 385 yards a game. We just got to improve the defence. And, and getting Chase Young is, is kind of the, a payback for such an awful season. So, you know, all the talk being the Dolphins that they were going to tank and then Ryan Fitzmagic pulled out a load of rabbits out of hats and, and the Redskins decided, oh, we'll tank instead. So, but hopefully it's worth it and hopefully Chase Young becomes a, an absolute difference maker. So we, the Redskins, I've just had a look. We've had, we picked, twi we've picked twice in the last 20 seasons at number two. Back in 2000, we drafted LeVar Arrington linebacker who had a pretty decent career and then in 2012 obviously RG3 so you know and that didn't really work out so I'm hoping that Chase Young works out a bit better than RG3 does. 
Well, definitely. So a year ago, 49ers on the clock. They took an edge rusher from Ohio State. Uh, they went on to the Super Bowl and they picked him in the second position. I'm sure you'll be hoping that the Redskins will duplicate that uh, in 2020 and will be playing in the big game a year from now. Never say never. Lawrence, why don't you tell everyone where they can find you? And uh, thanks very much for coming on. Yeah, I've, I've joined the Full 10 Yards team and I've set up a brand new branch of the Full 10 Yards, which is the Retro branch. So F10Y Retro is my Twitter handle. And I'll be absolutely delighted if any of you guys want me to write or, or talk about any kind of old players, old teams, old games. So I absolutely love going, you know, going into the past, looking at the archives. So if you want to talk anything about NFL past, hit me up on Twitter. Perfect. Well, thanks for coming on, Lawrence. Appreciate your time, buddy. And uh, good luck with Mr. Young. Cheers. Take care. <laughs> right, moving on. We're heading to Detroit. It's number three. The Lions are picking and we've got Rob on. Rob, welcome to Five Yard Rush. How are you doing? Thank you. He's in slow-mo. Rob's in slow-mo. <laughs> Rob, come back to full time. Hello, can you hear me? Hey, Rob, how you doing? Uh, not too bad, thank you. Sorry, for some reason it didn't want to play then. That's all right. So, with the third pick, where are you going? I'm going Derek Brown, Auburn Tigers. Um, yeah, uh, a def defensive tackle. Big reputation. Um, Jim Nagy's done a you know, scouting, you know, long term scout, considering him a better defensive tackle pros prospect than Nadamal uh, Kansu. He's a good out off field character as well, explosive and disruptive, um, from what I understand. Now, the problem with the Lions have every part of me was going go for a bigger playmaker, but the Lions probably currently have a, a big hole in defensive tackle. Mike Daniels and Sean Robinson, Darius Kilgore, all, all scheduled to go to unrestricted free agents. Damon Harrison's considering retirement. And quite frankly, I don't think I could pass up on a defensive tackle at this point without knowing what's going to happen with the contract situations for the rest of the Lions team. So at the moment, I ain't got a clue who they're going to put in that little hole. I think that's fair. Um, I mean, there's a, a lot of needs for... The, the Lions and I think at the end of the day you can't really go wrong with taking players in the trenches it's how you can start to build a foundation of the team I mean there's a bit of uncertainty over Stafford but you know picking arguably uh, the best interior defensive lineman in this class is uh, not a you know it's, it's definitely a, a potential home run pick but at least it's it's a high floor and I think when you're in the situation the Lions last couple of drafts haven't really panned out uh, to the best hopes that I guess Lions fans would have had. Um, I think that says that you're in a, you can't really go wrong with this pick. I think it's a, it's a solid one. So um, what, was there any temptation to go quarterback here, given the situation with Matt Absolutely Stafford? Zero. No chance at all. Um, First of all, you're not going to guarantee that you're going to get better than Stafford on a first-year rookie. Um, there is the issue with the back. I understand that he's reported back as he's kind of, you know, he's back to like 100%. The only kind of doubt that I had was the fact that his wife's kind of undergone to go for surgery for a brain tumour. If he'd have kind of come out and said, I'm putting the twins, newborn twins first, wife's had, you know, you know major surgery. I'm bowing out then. Obviously, I'd revise the whole plan. But at the moment, it's all looking like he's going to stay on. Um, given the holes with the rest of the squad, quarterback isn't one of the most urgent needs. Matt Patricia and Bob Quinn, obviously, since they kind of took over um, and with the loss of Jim Caldwell a few years ago, there's been a steady decline. They seem to be on a, like a, a win-now mentality. Um, I just couldn't see them sort of like taking a gamble on a first year rookie. I mean, Stafford's still tied into his contract. Yeah, you're not really going to be saving any cap space by unless he was actually retiring because the amount of dead cap that you've been retaining. Um, it's a needless 
you know, risk that, uh, yeah, I don't think he's going to propel the team any further forward by taking the quarterback at this point. Um, you know, possibility of a cornerback uh, to play alongside Darius Slay as his contract negotiations are up in the air. Um, so that was a little bit, yeah, of a temptation there to go for a corner. Wow, well, appreciate that. So um, I think it, I think that's a fair assessment, and I like your overview of it. And I'm sure other Lions fans would be pretty happy with this pick. So uh, for any Lions fans or anyone in, in NFL world, where can they uh, find out uh, a little bit more about you and, and you know talk talk some lines with you? No, no, it's, it's always um, it's on my Twitter handle at Rob Wastony. I'm more than happy to talk lines. But uh, as, to be honest with you, you guys were trying to struggle to find any Lions fans. Uh, so I just kind of came in as a ringer. So I'm not representing any podcast or anything like that. Uh, so I've nothing to sell, but I'm more than happy to talk to people if uh, they want to chat. Yeah, well, appreciate it. Yeah, we, we have had some difficulty finding some Lions fans over the years, but it's good to good to meet one and any fan of NFL is always more than qualified, especially when you're talking about your own team. So um, cheers, Rob, for, for coming on. I'm sure we'll speak again in the future. My, my pleasure. Right. Let's move over to the Big Apple, New York Giants, and uh, it's our first from Kickers, Matt. It's Jack. Jack, welcome back to Five Yard Rush, buddy. How are you doing? How are you going, gents? Sorry, I had myself muted. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Good to have you on. First ever FFCC champion, by the way, in the house, Jack Humphrey. How's yeah, it going? I don't like to remind people, but you know. That's all right. I'll remind you on your behalf, mate. Right. I'll be like your personal hype man everywhere you go. Every time you mention something on Twitter, I'll be like, FFCC champion, by the way. Oh. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Um, no, I, I really enjoyed the uh, concept this year, and um, I look forward to defending my title next year. Yeah, that's it, man. I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a fun format. We need to do some work on it. We've got a better platform lined up this year, so uh, I think it'd be better. You've learned a lot from it, but. We're not here to talk about fantasy football for a change or uh, or championship titles. We're here to talk about one of the quote unquote biggest teams in the NFL in the New York Giants. So uh, why don't you uh, let us all know uh, who you're going to be taking with this uh, this fourth pick? Um, I think I'm going to shock a few people here. So I'm taking Jerry Judy, wide receiver, Alabama. I um, I, I believe Jerry Judy is the best wide receiver coming out in this class. Um, He's a physical specimen. He's, I see a lot of people compare him to Julio Jones, but personally, I compare him to Calvin Ridley. Um, he's, he's played for Alabama for three years, 159 receptions for 2,742 uh, 2, yards and 16 touchdowns in that time. Um, and he, he's, he averages at 17.2 yards per catch, which is just unreal, really. Um, I, I think it'd be a nice piece to go with the wide receivers that we've already got in Stern and Shepard, Darius Slayton, who come on leaps and bounds this year. Uh, Golden Tate's obviously, st- obviously still there. Evan Ingram, Barkley. I, I just think it'd be the finished piece to our offense. And um, yeah, we, we need to give Daniel Jones some more weapons. Yeah, I mean, that's, it's definitely, uh, definitely a bold pick. Um, and we all know what uh, Dave Gettleman's like. He'll always go away from conventional wisdom. So this, I don't think this would shock me on draft night if this actually happened. Um, and it, it does make sense because as much as you have wide receivers there, I don't think there's a standout one. And I no. think he's really someone who could potentially take that role on. So, it, it, I mean, it's definitely a bold pick. And I'm sure that if this did play out, there would be some criticism. But I think at the same token, I think it is a position of need. And when you've got a talent potentially like Judy, then it, it works out. So um, what, what was your, was this like, as soon as you got the, the, the call you were doing this and doing four, was this your pick or did you sort of sway and look at a couple of different names? Um, I, I swayed, I had a look at, I, I was hoping Chase Young would sort of drop. <laughs> so, but, um, obviously that wasn't going to happen. Um, if I'm the Giants here, I, I, I would trade out of this pick all day long um, to someone that wants a quarterback or I was actually telling Jamie on Sunday I if I'm the Giants I would take a QB and trade him (laughs) kind of like what they did with uh, Philip Rivers um, when they took Eli Manning a bit later etc all that Um, 
so yeah, I would I would do something like that. I, I, they, we all know what Dave Gettleman's like. Dave Gettleman's not going to do anything that drastic. Um, I he could I pretend I, I I took a look at some of the linemen as well in this class. So, um, but I, I I've just as a Giants fan, we've been burned that in in the past by taking linemen early. Eric Flowers, prime example, took him at nine what, four or five years ago now, and um, look where he is now. He's, he's playing for the Redskins. Yeah, that's fair. Um, yeah, I, I get that. I think it's a, it's an interesting pick, the four pick. I wouldn't be surprised if the Giants trade back. I wouldn't be surprised if they went in another direction. Wouldn't be surprised if this happened. I think sort of this, this for me, I think the first three picks are relatively predictable uh, unless there's a trade. So this is, I think, a pivot point in the half. So, um, it's interesting to see how it's going. So, uh, appreciate you coming on, Jack. Uh, only the one pick for you this year after two last year. So, where can everybody find uh, and interact with you? Uh, so, you can find me on Twitter at Jack Humphrey KM and the podcast Kickers Matter at Kickers underscore Matter. Um, yeah, we're just doing some great work over there. And I've also set up uh, the Steve Rains Bowl this year. Um, so, if you haven't, get signed up to it. 100%. Right. Jack, thanks for your time, buddy. We will speak soon. And it's Cheers, first studio. It's the uh, time for the first studio pick. Lee, you're up, my friend. Picking for the Dolphins at five. Where are you going? I think so far it's just going to leave these no gone. So <laughs> <laughs> just give you two on, and I'm happy. Um, the, the owner's been in love with him for, for nearly three years. Like, all I'm doing is signing the card and putting his in and then signing my extension. So... I'll be the, uh, the GM going forwards. But, yeah, I think, you know, we're in a unique position with, with three picks in the first round. That's why the injury doesn't concern me nearly as much. I'm still going to get a first-round pick on the field this year, um, I believe. Um, I think we probably end up with two picks on the night. I think we actually trade probably out of one of them. But we've got all the ammunition to move up. I, think. I just don't see it going any other way. I, I think, you know, whatever someone's willing to offer to get up to two, We'll beat, we'll beat it. We've got it. That's why you, you know, they accrued all this capital. So outgun anyone who comes for it, right? That's it. I think they're they're willing to overpay. I just, you know, if someone's going to fleece them, then it'll be annoying. But at the same time, I think if you've got a guy, go get him. Yeah, I think, like you mentioned, they got all the ammunition to go get him. And if he is a favourite and you really want him, saw it with Kyle Murray, didn't we last year? Go, <laughs> go get your boy. Well, yeah. I, I think it's interesting, and I think you're right. I think anybody, if you're looking, if you're Detroit or you're New York, I think you've got to be really smart here and start actively looking for an offer. Because yeah. unless you're really desperate and you, you I mean, you, Jack said, it, you know, you love with a player and everything. You think, okay, makes sense. And I, I, I can definitely see them not trading back because Getham is not a big trading back player or, or GM. So I, I kind of get that. But... I can't help but think if I was the Lions or the or the New York office, I'd be trying to get an offer yeah. and then I'd be going and I'd be giving Miami a call before accepting it saying, right, this is on the table. We know you want Tua. I mean, it's been telegraphed since August, yeah. really, that Tua is the target. We have the tanking for Tua. We had all the things um, going on about it. And yet... Yeah, when your agent comes out and says, I hope the Bengals fall in love with Joe Burrow, it's a yeah. pretty pretty good shot across the bell saying, like, we know where we want to go. I think the feeling's mutual from the, the two as camp as well, which seems a bit underhanded, but I think it's just the way it is. They know where they want to be. The Dolphins know they want him. I think on the night, you probably see a trade with um, Detroit. Yeah. I think um, their coaching staff is in a more win-now mode, whereas we can afford to take the guy with an injury history, if he doesn't play this year, it's fine. We'll get a first round pick on the field. And I think for a lot of people, that's too big a risk to take this high up in the draft. Yeah, I think that. I think definitely. I think Miami are going to be the most interesting team on the first night of the draft. I think not just the three picks, as you mentioned. I think they're going to dance around this board a little bit and see what they do. So um, I think what they've got there and everything they've got. Tua makes sense. You can rest on him. We know Ryan Fitzpatrick's coming back. We know he's going to be the open day starter, yeah. barring some kind of miracle. Yeah. So it's pretty set. I guess the one, the one aspect of this is Josh Rosen. Yeah, Josh Rosen is interesting because I believe there's about $6 million left on his contract. 
but none of it's guaranteed from us. Um, the Cardinals pay for full guaranteed part of that contract, so there's no real penalty for moving him on. Um, if two is going to go on IR or the, or the pup list to start the season, they'll just roll with a pair of them, have, have Rosen back up again. If not, I just see them taking him into camp. They need a camp arm anyway. I mean, very well may see him just get cut. I mean, it was um, apparently evident early that Flores wasn't in love with the trade. Um, the offensive coordinator, whose name has just escaped my mind, <laughs> Chad O'Shea, was the one banging the table for Josh Rosen. He's now been let go. The, you know, the, the talk is that part of that is you wanted your guy, you got him, and then you very early within two weeks that he just wasn't going to be the answer. So I think that's why he's, he's now gone and say no penalty for moving on from him. So someone may want to trade for him as a backup, but if not, they, they'll, they'll cut bait. I think you'll see. I, I wouldn't be surprised if the, the Patriots throw like a fifth or sixth of him just, yeah. to, just to have a look at him. I mean, it's the sort of thing that you can see from the Bel- Belichick regime that they can do that. But um, you'll be back later on, so no need to pitch uh, who you are, where you are. We'll leave that till the Is end. That? <laughs> <laughs> Not the end of this. Um, <laughs> so we're going to move on. Um, going to move on to the Chargers. San Diego Chargers. No. No, oh, come on. I was tied into my joke at the beginning. Yeah. Where I'd get the Vegas Raiders <laughs> wrong. Come on, Lee. You just heard his voice. It's Lee picking at six for six. Yeah, six for the LA Chargers from full 10 yards. Polish Lee. Welcome to Five Yard Rush, buddy. How you doing? Yeah, good, thanks. How's everyone else? Everyone doing well? Yeah, we're good. We're good. That's it. Good so stuff, good stuff. The third member of the full 10 yards crew on in the top six picks. So yeah, okay. he, this isn't reflective of your podcast that you're picking at the start. <laughs> <laughs> but it's good to have you on. You were here last year. You were picking slightly higher uh, last year. Do you remember who you picked last year? I actually didn't do the charges last year. I did the Bills, didn't I? Because you got someone else to do the charges before me. That's right. Yeah. Do you remember who you picked for the Bills? I do, I do. Uh, TJ Hawkinson at number eight, I think it was, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, you picked Hawkinson. Is it eight or nine? I think it was nine, actually, now I've said it. Yeah, I'm sure it was nine. Bills didn't pick after Tampa. Yes. I th- yeah, I think you're right, actually. Nine, yeah. But yeah, Hawkinson for me. Oh, he went at eight. He went life, at eight in real life, yeah. Uh, that's it, yeah. So, come on then, Lee. At six, who are you taking? So, I mean, it's just going to have to be Justin Herbert, QB, Oregon for me. Um, I think we all know now that it's pretty much set in stone that Philip Rivers is going to move on um, and we're moving on from him. So I feel like, you know, whilst you're sat in the top 10, I think you've just got to draft QB. I think you've got to strike while the iron's hot. The Chargers have got a really talented roster and, you know, you can't really compete without a quarterback, I don't think. Um, I think, you know, it's one of those things where you just, like I said before, you just have to strike while the iron's hot. Um, so for me, you know, before the draft, I was making my preparations, doing my sort of list and things like that. And it was either Tua or Herbert. I didn't think Tua would drop. Um, so Herbert. And I don't want to make that sound like a consolation prize by saying that because he's still a very good quarterback prospect with, I think, a very, very high ceiling indeed. You know, he's got a good arm uh, in terms of velocity, plenty of accuracy, uh, although it's something I want to see him improve on the next level. Um, he's athletic. It's the athletic profile that Anthony Lynn wants from his QB, you know, it's something that we've not really seen, obviously, since having Philip Rivers. And, you know, for Chargers fans like me, who have only known Philip Rivers, having a mobile QB is going to excite people and it's going to be something that's getting bums on seats, hopefully, at the new stadium. And that's obviously another aspect of this pick um, as well. Um, you know, but having that player who can move the chains or go off script and, and do something and extend plays is going to add another dimension to the offense, which is kind of exciting, I, th- I feel. Um you know, the knock is that he doesn't go through his reads very quickly, uh, but he hasn't asked to do that very much in Oregon, but it doesn't mean he can't do it or won't do it in future. There's no perfect prospect. Uh, and like I said, he's a very good QB who's won a Power 5 conference this year and won a bowl game. So I'd be quite happy. Um, I think he'd be happy to come and, and play for the Chargers, play on the West Coast, stay on the West Coast. And unlike Oregon, he'd have some weapons to throw to. So, <laughs> yeah, I think it's a good marriage. So, yeah, no, I'd be picking Justin Herbert and uh, be very happy about it, I think. Just a quick one before you let you go. Do you think there's any scenario where the Chargers move, try and move into three or four and try and go for two up? I, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's not a Tom Tesco move. Tom Tesco is quite a conservative GM. It's not some, something that he would do. But, you know, they've both just been extended, Anthony Lynn and Tom Tesco now. Both been given multi-year deals, I think it was two days ago. So, you know, they've got that security. So maybe they, you know, if they feel like, well... We've got a talented roster. Let's push the chips into the middle of the table, get a, a better QB maybe, um, although we might not play this year. 
Um, so yeah, potentially, but you know, he's got that, we've got that, uh, the insurance of Tyrod Taylor, you know, it's Tyrod Taylor. It's not the most exciting QB in the world, but it's not a bad QB either. And he probably played on the most talented team that he had done. So we've got that insurance policy. So I don't think so, but it would be darn exciting if it happened. Yeah. That oh, was a good one to, to work out. I think, uh, this is the interesting part of the draft five, six, mm. see what happens. I, I, you know, I'm not sure if these teams pick at five and six, but they're, they're definitely two teams on draft mm. night to, to watch out for because realistically both will go QB. It's just who's going to get who, where, and what they're going to have to pay to get their guy. Yeah, or for sure. Be a late contender as well. You're looking at, we don't know at this moment, the situation with say uh, James Winston and do Tampa then get in the race to, to move up. Um, you're looking at the Colts who aren't overly sold. And I know they're not really a, a team that move up too far, but they've got a huge stash of picks mm. in the second, third round. And they are a team that potentially moves up. And it's going to be interesting to see what, what these teams just behind do as well. So Yeah, I'm for sure. I mean, one thing that I have my eye on is Carolina moving up. I think with David Tepper, the new owner, I think they're going to be aggressive. Matt Rule's now got his security. He can go for a new QB. They're not. They're not going to be tied to Cam. I don't think with the new regime. So I think they've. They've. Got, they're the ones that I'm scared of. You know, if, if they're going to jump us and Miami are going to get the other QB and we're going to be left, you know, having to maybe pick Jordan Love and maybe trading back to do so. I don't know, but um, yeah, that's they're the, they're the guys that I'm scared of to be honest with you in terms of trading up. One to watch for sure. We'll do it again in two months' time. We will see where we are. But Lee, thanks very much for coming on. Why don't you tell everyone where they can find you? Yeah, so obviously in part of the full 10 yards gang, as we said, um, I'm running the college side of things. So you can catch me, uh, personal handle on Twitter, at Wakefield90. Uh, you can catch the CFB Twitter, um, at full 10 yards CFB. And obviously we've been doing weekly podcasts and kind of, dro- kind of, kind of, kind of trying to grow college football over here when I can put my teeth in. But yeah, um, yeah, good to be on. And uh, yeah, like Adam said before, enjoy the draft. Uh, cheers, mate. Good to have you on. We'll speak soon. Yeah, speak soon, guys. See ya. So... I've just been informed that there's a power cut in uh, Carolina and the whole of Carolina has been outed with power temporarily wow. at the very least. Um, so our GM, Neo, is unfortunately caught in that. So uh, <laughs> as a result, I've drafted in someone who will be on later on and pulled up because uh, oh, no. they were nearby. Oh, no. GM of the New Orleans State, Simon Carroll on to pick on behalf of trusted division rival, the <laughs> Carolina Panthers. Cy, how you doing? How are you doing, guys? You all good? Yeah, all good. So, I mean, this isn't hinky at all that the Saints are going to be picking on behalf of the, the Panthers. Here comes the first kicker. <laughs> <laughs> I, did, I did consider uh, absolutely tanking this, but um, I think I'm being quite fair with the pick. I'm going to put it in a couple of minutes' time. Uh, yeah, I, I agree. So, I was uh, thinking about who, who this might be, and you and I came up with the same name. So... Um, oh, if, be if it's between if it's between one or two, and I'm sure you're probably very similar as well. So um, I, I agree with this pick. I think it's it's something I could easily see on the night. So why don't you go ahead with the seventh pick of, of this draft and describe who you're picking for uh, the Carolina Panthers? Okay, with the seventh pick of the 2020 NFL draft, the Panthers will be picking a uh, cornerback from Ohio State, Jeff Okuda. Um Kind of makes sense, really. The Panthers have got quite considerable free agency um, activity going on. Ross Cockrell, Javin Elliott and James Bradbury, all free agents. So they could be really bare back there. Dante Jackson, the 2018 picks come on quite nicely, but they'll still need somebody else. Some options, though. They had some good... There's, there's plenty of different directions that uh, the Panthers could go. And just like Wakey said before me, um, they're very much in line to be trading up and getting that quarterback mix if they do decide to move on from camp. Uh, obviously, Luke Keekley retired, so linebacker was an option as well. And Isaiah, Isaiah Simmons was sat there, and it was very tempting to go for him. Um, and not only that, but the interior defensive line, there's some big names there. Javon Kinlaw, what a beast he is. He could have been an option too. But I think just on pure talent alone, I think the most surefire, safest pick you could possibly get here is Jeff Okuda in the cornerback position. Yeah, I, I agree. And I think with the way that they're overhauling that uh that team, using more analytics, the way David Tepper's run the team, bringing in Ron Rivera, this wouldn't shock me at all. They're not a bad offense. There's some question marks at QB, and that might change this. But if things were to roll the way they have done, um, I can definitely see this pick being uh, the way it is. Um, given what's on the board and what's available, I think he's not only the best DB in this class, but um, he's arguably probably the safest pick as well. You just sort of every year you have one or two players that you just know, no matter what. You're Quinton Nelson a couple of years ago. 
Um, last year, Devon White, you know those players were going to be, at worst, very, very good players. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And I think um, it might not be the sexiest of picks for Matt Rule in his first year there. But, um, you know, Isaiah Simmons might have the bit of more star power to his name. But ultimately, you've got to get these first round picks right. And there's a bit more um, bust potential with Simmons that over Akuda, I, I, would, I would argue. And they haven't had really a shutdown corner since Josh Norman fled town for Washington. So I think it, it, it makes sense. Yeah, <laughs> I meant to say Matt Rowland. I don't know why everyone remember because he was there last year. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, forgot about Rawls there. So, no, it's great. Why don't you tell, well, you're going to be on later on, so I'll let you uh, sort of plug everything where you are uh, then when you'll come back to pick uh, for the New Orleans Saints. Uh, so, until then, thanks very much, and we'll speak in a bit. No worries, guys. Catch you later. Right, then. They made the pick at number one last year, sliding back seven places. It's time for the Arizona Cardinals. I'm picking on their behalf. We've got Andrew from the American Football Cast. Andrew, welcome to Five Dead Rush. How are you doing? I am doing very well, guys. Thanks for having me on. Well, thanks for coming. A pleasure. Always a pleasure. <laughs> so, coming then, seven picks later than last year. Who are you taking at eight and why? Um, I have been debating this all day with myself as to, to where to go with this pick. And, I mean, there's two options in terms of the, the position of needs that the Cardinals have got. It's got to be either offensive tackle or wide receiver. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I've gone a bit with my heart over my head with this pick, but I think the Cardinals might go that way as well because it's what they do sometimes. Um, so with the eighth pick, I am going with C.D. Lamb, wide receiver from Oklahoma. Stonks' face is a picture for those of you watching this <laughs> on YouTube. <laughs> this has been, like, if this goes out how it is on, on draft night, the Broncos organisation are just going to be in pieces right now. Yep. Explain. <laughs> The pick, we're talking about a team that drafted three, three wide receivers last year. Um, yep. What, what's the need for uh, uh, C.D. Lamb here, uh, given what they have? Yeah, so last year there was a bit of a scattergun approach. None of them have developed into a wide receiver one. Um, Fitzgerald is still the leading res- receiver on that team. Um, whereas I think Lamb has the potential to be that number one guy. Obviously, he played with Kyler Murray in, co- uh, in college as well. Um, so there's a, a familiar connection there. Um, I just think it makes sense to... You, you've brought in your, your star quarterback. You've got to give him the, the toys to play with as well. And I think C.D. Lamb is that guy for Kyler Murray. Yeah. yeah. I like the pick myself, <laughs> as is obviously evident. I... Uh... Yeah, they just they've got a few holes on defense that I thought you might have tried to plug. But Yeah, I just defense maybe pick something up later on. Um, but I think the way this offense was last year, it's on the up. Um, you maybe try to address the, the defense and free agency and things and, and focus on the offense at the top of the draft. Yeah, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. Well, Andrew, thank you for coming on. Why don't you let Rush Nation know where they can find you and your podcast? Yep, so you can find me personally on Twitter at AndrewDHD. You'll get a mix of NFL and Scottish football on there if that's your kind of thing. Um, and you can find us uh, at the AF Cast on Twitter or search the American Football Cast on Facebook. We haven't put anything out in a while, but we'll be back in probably a couple of months' time um, and you'll hear from us again. Perfect. Thanks very much for making your selection and coming onto the job. Cheers, gents. Right then, today we found out they're going to be playing twice in London. I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. Well, the 19 fans in Duval County, Jacksonville, who have to give up two home games aren't going to be very happy. But I'm sure many of the fans here are very happy. Well, this. I'm happy. I'm happy for Andre because he supports the Jags. And if he gets to see them twice, good for him. Absolutely. So we mentioned the Jacksonville Jaguars. And just going on this mock draft machine thing here, when a team needs to come up and you get like six or seven, they have literally everything but Waterboy on there. Yeah. There's <laughs> everything, everything. Anyway. And a long snapper. Yeah, they're not there, but they don't essentially need those over these skill positions, surely. <laughs> they are on the list, you just can't see them. Right, picking for the Jags is Patrick Jan- Jackson, sorry, from the Long Snapper podcast. Patrick, welcome to Five Yard Rush. How are you doing? Yeah, good. Thank you very much. Um, nice pick has fallen in my lap, so uh, the uh, the choice was relatively easy in the end. With the uh, ninth pick of the draft, the Jaguars pick Isaiah Simmons, linebacker from Clemson. Solid. <laughs> yeah, I was rather hoping that um, 
Akuda would drop to me. And when he went off, then it was just a case of fingers crossed that uh, Simmons makes his way down. Although I was quite pleased to see the um, two fancy wide receivers go early because it's always tempting to reach for the glittery, sparkly prize. But in the end, I think a linebacker to replace Pozlozny, to replace Telvin Smith, is is the most important thing for the team right now. So, um, yeah, I couldn't not in the end. No, definitely. I think, ah. it, I think it's an interesting pick. Um, was there any thought in your mind, looking at how the board has gone, to think about a QB here or um, any other positions? Or, or was, uh, you know, after Akuda, Simmons was your guy? F- funnily enough, QB was one of the very few positions I ruled out as picking in the first round. I think Minshew last year showed he could handle an offence better than an... Um, MVP Super Bowl quarterback. I'm happy to ride with him for the next four or five years and, you know, see how that goes and build some tools around him. No, definitely. I think uh, I think that makes sense. Um, you know, it's clearly, it's, it's going to be an interesting, interesting year in Jacksonville. There is a lot of needs there. It'd be interesting to see what they do um, moving forward, especially with the second pick. They'll probably give you a little bit more uh, idea as to what direction they're going to be thinking. Um, but I think I think it's a solid pick again. I think it's one of those picks that it's a relatively safe pick. I don't think uh, Isaiah Simmons is a player who's going to come into the league and struggle. I think he looks comfortable. There's always a bit of a learning curve at at linebacker, um, but we've seen how quickly players can adapt to that position. Devin White this year um, adapted very quickly. He did have the injury, but when he got into the game, played a few games, you, you could see the talent there. And, I think it's a, a position that in drafts is underrated um, and maybe not one that draft analysts like to see go this high. But oh, I love we saw, a linebacker. Yeah, I mean, we saw two excellent linebackers go in the top 10 last year and those picks really paid for themselves um, and will for years to come in Devin Bush and Devin White. So I don't think you can go wrong. But you're going to be picking in 11 uh, picks time. So we look forward to having you back on then. Yeah, well, thanks for having me on, and I'll see you again shortly. See you in a bit. Right. I've just seen who's picking next. This better be Jack and not Paul. I swear to God. The Cleveland Browns are here, and it's our boy Jack from the Paul Brown podcast, picking at 10. Jack, you there? How are we doing, boys? Yay! Thank the Lord. I'm only joking. How are you doing, buddy? I'm good. Um, it, it's It's been a crazy one, this draft, because... I came into it expecting a pick one. It's like, let's just have a little look at what out of the four offensive tackles are left. Um, and then it got to my pick and I just went, oops, I better go and do some research quickly because I expected there to only be one of the four offensive tackles left. And all four of them were sat there. So I thought suddenly I better start digging in and having a little look at who's there. So I uh, got on the phone to uh, my boy, Jeff Lloyd, from the uh, Locked On Browns podcast. I said, Jeff, I need a bit of help here. And uh, Humble brag. he's given me a little bit of inside <laughs> tips. He said, stay off Beckton, who's been getting a little bit of hype lately. Uh, Daniel Jeremiah had him really high. Just think size, endurance could cause some issues with um, the wide zone scheme that Stefanski is going to bring in. So we're between Worths and Thomas and um, the other option, because the Browns are down to two options. It's as simple as that at what we're going to do at 10. It's offensive tackle or it's trade down. Everything else, just forget it. We're not doing anything else. We're not even interested. Um, we're either going to grab an offensive tackle or we're going to trade down. Where there's been a run on quarterbacks, there's not really the option to trade down. So for me... I would just draft because combine is going to be important for offensive tackles. Whichever one's got the best three cone. Three cone is a really important drill for your offensive tackles. It's all about that agility and the short little bursts. So um, until we get that, it's hard to decide. But scheme wise, it's Worfs or Thomas. So uh, it's Tristan Worfs, offensive tackle out of Iowa. He's going to come down, lock down one of the two sides for the Browns. Um, it depends. We've got to replace both offensive tackles this year. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see where he lands. That's interesting. You, you have it down to Thomas and Worths, not considering Wills, who in most mock drafts is going above both. 
so purely for a scheme which which two are most likely size and stuff it, it, it's really hard at this stage with pre-combine offensive tackles i really like to get the athletic data um to be able to separate them um so for me purely on best scheme fits worse than thomas is where i'm leaning but uh if you ask me next time we do it after the combine's been done, I'm just going to look at the three cone. Whichever one's got the best three cone, I'll have him. You never know, Jack. Next time it might not be all four available. <laughs> I, I would be shocked. If if we get to, I think on draft night, we're going to be looking at at least two of them gone by the time the Browns picks, if not three of them gone. Um, I think there's some players that have been picked that are probably going to end up dropping further than people expect. So, uh, I think because offensive tackle is not a sexy position, um, but it is an important position. And if you can get one, you're only getting them through the draft. You don't get offensive tackles that are top 25% quality going free agency. Um, so unless you're drafting them, you're not getting them. Um, so ideal time, pick them early, pick them often. Perfect. Love that. I love that. Well, Jack, people have heard you on here long enough, but why don't you let them know where to find you in the podcast once more? Well, you can find me on Twitter. It's at Jack Duffin. Um, I do loads of salary cap stuff alongside uh, podcasting. Uh, the podcast is Daily Browns Podcast. So it's Paul Brown Podcast. Paul does more or less, we work seven days a week. I think it's about five now. Um, do some writing at dog.land. Um, so loads going on Browns Wides. Off season's my favorite time of the year. It's where the chaos happens. Give me some free agency, give me some draft, and just give me some cuts. I, I love just the craziness. Of the start of the season happens, I get bored again. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And look, we'll, uh, we'll have you on. Um, I'm sure I'll see you well before. Um, but if not, we'll, uh, we'll have you on in two months' time. And once you've got that data here, which OT you rank, I, I'll get both opinions. Which one you would have had, and then which one you, you, you're going to draft in a couple of months' time once you've had the combine everything to assess. See you then, boys. Take it easy. Cheers, mate. Right then. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's move on to 11. The other side of the Big Apple is gangrene. New York Jets are picking at 11, and it's Thomas from the UK and Ireland Jets. Thomas, welcome to Five Guard Rush. How you doing, buddy? Hi, guys. Yeah, good. Uh, good to be back in video this time rather than just on the phone, which is weird. Next time I'm going to appear via hologram. <laughs> we're trending upwards what can we say yeah um, I, I have to say I'm absolutely delighted with how this, this mock draft has gone I'd, I'd quite like to sort of cancel the 2.0 cancel the real thing and just, just end it there because I think Jets are going to get the best defensive tackle on the board um, in Jedrick Wills I'm really pleased yeah I, th- I, thought, you, I thought you might be I think uh I'm a little shocked. I don't think he's going to be there at 11 in real life unless something happens no. with combine or injury. No. Um, I, I I can understand Worths. I, I do understand that pick 100%. Um, and Jack sort of explained it well for scheme and size and everything. I, 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 like, I get that. I do think another team takes an, an offensive tackle that makes it less of a, a decision. So it is yeah, a I, gift here. At that's, what I was, that's what I was hoping. I was, I was actually I was hoping there'd be a couple off the board and it just makes the decision a bit easier because... I think Mackay Becton's a difficult one to sort of think about at 11. It might be a bit a bit high for him. Um, but with Jebrick Wills, I think the, the key thing for me between Wills and Wirfs is if Wirfs Worth, moves position from right tackle, it's probably going to be inside to right guard. Whereas with Wills, there's the chance he can play left tackle. Um, Kelvin Beecham's 31, so we're not going to get much more out of Beecham. So, yeah, I think, I think we've got the best defensive tack on the board. And, and let's be honest, the Jets line absolutely stacked to high heaven last season. Uh, and we really need fixing. I'd probably take an offensive tackle with the first two picks if I was the Jets. I think that's a solid pick. Again, uh, said it a couple of times, don't think you can really miss on, on him barring injury or something happens. I think he's solid played. Uh, He's been a stud on that uh, Alabama line for the last couple of years. He's really performed well and he deserves a payday. And then, yeah, it's definitely a position of need for the Jets. They need to create some more holes for Lev Bell and they really need to start uh, protecting Sam Darnold more because he can't keep taking the punishment he has done over over his first two years in the league. No, I mean, it'd be incredibly New York Jets to ruin a quarterback like Sam Darnold. Um, (laughs) 
he's he's six months younger than Joe Burrow and he's got two years under his belt. He's slowly getting to the point where he's looking like the quarterback we think he can be. But if we can't protect him, we're going to ruin him. Um, and we'll be right back to the beginning of the Jets cycle, which is finding a franchise quarterback. So um, it's funny you should mention Lev Bell. I don't think Lev Bell will be a Jet next year. Um, I'd, I'd be disappointed to see him go. But I feel as though the, the, the rift between him and Adam Gase is, is too big. Um, so he, he might need to create some holes for a another running back next season. Perfect. Well, uh, thanks for coming on, buddy. Appreciate your time. Why don't you let everybody know where they can find you and your stuff? No worries. Um, so the UK and Ireland Jets um, available on Twitter. Um, I'm not going to give my, my personal Twitter out because it's, it's mostly uh, Bolton Wanderers chat and nobody wants to hear that. So, um, <laughs> yeah, UK and Ireland Jets for all, all chat Jets. It's, it's usually on a Sunday between 6 and 9.30. Lots of, uh, lots of people rage tweeting particularly when it comes up against against the Patriots. But times are changing in the AFC East, so good times are ahead. Cheers, guys. Thanks for coming back, and uh, we'll, we'll hear from you in two months' time. Yeah, all the best. See ya. Cheers, mate. Ciao. Right then. Let's go to Vegas, baby. It's Raiders time, picking at 12. Man, oh, man. It's Ollie H from the College Chaps pod. Ollie, welcome to Five Yard Rush, buddy. How you doing? Not too bad. Cheers, guys. Thanks for having me on. Good evening to you all. <clears throat> uh, it's long overdue. You need to uh, get you on a little bit more uh, before the draft. You uh, Great podcast you do. Great work you're doing at the moment as well. So, um, Appreciate we'll, it. Thank you. Uh, mate, we'll get to that in a moment. Um, but, you know, I know you, what What are your feelings here as a, as a Rangers GM? What, where are you going to go with the, the 12th pick? We're not messing about. With the 12th overall pick, the Raiders select Henry Ruggs III, wide receiver from Alabama. <laughs> Broncos Nation right now is really like, well, just really, really down the dumps here. All their targets are just flying off the board. <laughs> uh, I mean, quite, quite high here. What, what's the thinking on no on Ruggs? No. Why, why is, uh, why is he coming off the board at 12? I mean, you say quite early, but let's be honest, Henry Ruggs III, um, he led all Alabama receivers in um, receiving yards per catch in 2019. Um, he was third in the SEC in um, yards per reception. Um, just a speedster. And let's be honest, the Raiders, they put all their eggs in Antonio Brown's basket last year. Um, that didn't work out. And, and guys like Darren Waller and guys like Hunter Renfro sort of carried the team last year, but there wasn't that true WR1. And Henry Ruggs has got the potential to do that for um, for Las Vegas um, next year. Straight away, instant impact. Um, he's got speed for days. He can make contested catches. You know, even he's a slight frame maybe for an NFL wide receiver, but if you're nowhere near him, it's not really going to matter. And the Raiders, they want to stretch the field. Gruden's offense is... He's trying to stretch the field, and, and Henry Ruggs is going to do that for you. Yeah, no, I, I, he's an exciting player. He isn't someone I've done all the work yet on him, but what I have seen has uh, has excited me. I can understand the excitement on him. I think he's someone who has potentially a bright future. Um, again, it's just can Derek Carr utilize this weapon and make it work? That's the one part of this I'm not overly sure that they'll get on the same page but I do hope for, for Raiders fans that they do Yeah I mean they, they put all the um, all the things in place last year in terms of the offensive line and the running game for Derek Carr to have a season like the 2016 season but there just wasn't that wide receiver for him and, and hopefully Rooks can be that or he can be that for another guy you know Tom Brady's reportedly bought a house in Las Vegas um, who knows what that situation looks like? Um, he, whoever's the quarterback of the Raiders next year can use a wide receiver like Henry Rose. I I've read a couple of things uh, today actually whilst doing research and seen a couple of mock drafts to say that he could, after the combine, possibly be the highest rated wide receiver and could go as the first receiver off the board. There's, so, a, very good, there's a very good chance he beats John Ross's 40 yard dash time, um, and you saw what that did for John Ross's stock. But let's see what he does for Henry Rose. 100%, 100%. Well, thanks so much for coming on, buddy. Why don't, they, uh, why don't you tell people where they can find all your stuff? 
Well, it's going to be on in seven picks. <laughs> we can do it there. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll do it later. Oh, well, yeah. uh, okay. and we can talk about your great podcast then as well. But uh, until then, Ollie, thanks for stepping on, and we'll we'll see you in in just a bit. Thank you. So just before we get our next pick in, I just want to recap for those of you that are listening uh, or listening to this um, and not following on the YouTube uh, feed. If you are, go check the YouTube feed. But um, I just want to recap the picks. The first 12 picks are in. So Joe Burrow, quarterback, LSU, has gone to the Bengals. The Redskins picked Chase Young, edge rusher of Ohio State. Derek Brown, interior defensive lineman has, uh, from Auburn, has gone to the Lions. Giants select Jerry Judy, wide receiver from Alabama. The Miami Dolphins pick Tua Tagovailoa. Uh, messed that one up. Tagovailoa, <laughs> quarterback from Alabama. Um, Justin Herbert, quarterback of Oregon, has gone to the Chargers. Jeffrey uh, Akudo is uh, with the Carolina Panthers, quarterback from Ohio State. C.D. Lamb, wide receiver from Oklahoma, has gone to the Cardinals. Isaiah Simmons, linebacker for Clemson, has gone to the Jags. Tristan Wirfs, uh, offensive tackle from Iowa, has gone to the Browns. Uh, Jets selected Jedrick Wills, offensive tackle from Alabama. And then um, another Alabama pick, Henry Ruggs III, wide receiver from Alabama, has gone to the, the Las Vegas Raiders. Almost messed that one up as well. Oh, so probably. that is four Alabama offensive players that have gone in the top 12 picks. They were pretty good. Pretty good. So now we move on to... Uh, Unlucky for some, but this team have a horseshoe, so they should be able to nullify the bad luck. <laughs> yeah, so at 13, it's the Indianapolis Colts, and picking for them is Ben Isaacs from the Nat Coombe Show and TalkSport. Ben, welcome to Five Yard Rush. How are you doing, buddy? I'm good. Just in case anyone is wondering, no, I am not a Colts fan. My life is not that boring. <laughs> Did you support again, Ben? Uh, the Chicago Bears, and uh, that is never boring. It's painful and annoying. <laughs> But it sure as hell isn't boring. Uh, I mean, you've got double doinks and kicking competitions and all sorts going on. I, I mean, I, I, I've actually got nothing against the Colts. And before the Colts arrived in Indianapolis from Baltimore in uh, 83, um, that, was, that was full on Chicago Bears territory. You know, if, you, if that's where you lived, you were getting Bears games and you were a Bears fan. Um, so, you know, there's a, natural, there's a natural connection there. And I did have a former Colts quarterback um, once swear at me in an interview, but um, we won't go into that. <laughs> that's a shame. That's quite, quite a good way to think that's, I think that's an, that's an off-air conversation. <laughs> I look forward to that. Well, um, whilst, uh, whilst we've got you here, with uh, Lucky Pick 13, uh, Indianapolis Colts, which direction have you uh, gone here? Um, the Indianapolis Colts have selected Andrew Thomas, uh, offensive tackle, Georgia Bulldogs, which I feel is a great value pick. I think he is at least, at the very, very least, a top 10 talent. When I was making my list of, I wanted to have 13 players, so I knew that you know one of those, one of those would come to me. And I had, a, I had a short list at the top of players that I knew wouldn't make it, but I wanted to put down anyway, the likes of Burrow and Tour and Chase Young. And I actually put Andrew Thomas in that, in that list. It did not occur to me that he would fall. So I'm going BPA, best player available. Um, Anthony Costanzo may not, be, may not be a Colt in the next couple of months. So it fills the gap there. It takes the pressure off what they're going to do with him fill it with an outstanding rookie who um, is arguably, I mean, everyone's got their different opinions on the offensive tackles and it, and it is quite deep in the first half of the, of the first round, but I, Andrew Thomas, I would put, I'd put right up there. Um, I didn't expect to pick an offensive tackle. I was hoping for a wide receiver and all the wide receivers I wanted were gone. I wasn't sure if people were, anyone was going to, take a risk on Henry Ruggs in the top half. I think he's top half talent. Um, and I wasn't going to reach for Justin Jefferson, um, who I think will go late in the, in the first round. I think the Colts could also do with a quarterback, but I wasn't going to reach for Jordan Love, who was, the, who was the best quarterback remaining. So I've gone with quality, consistency and quality. He's an outstanding run blocker. The... Pass blocking is going to need work, but I'm not expecting kind of the, the finished article with a with the 13th pick in the draft. But he's got so much upside, 
a three-year starter at Georgia. Um, just one of the best offensive tackles in college football in the last couple of years. The best in the SEC, I think, despite what people in Alabama would tell you. Um, an outstandingly powerful young man who can just be a fixture on an offensive line for a decade to come. I, I agree. I, um, you kind of made my decision. So, spoiler alert, I'm picking after you. <laughs> Andrew Thomas was, again, he was on, he was in my list of players that he won't fall to me at 14. And I was thinking like, oh, you've put me in a really difficult position here because now I'm, well, you didn't, you put me in an easy position because you've selected my pick for me effectively. But it would have been a really tough, well, it wouldn't have been, I would have gone Andrew Thomas if you let him slide. I wouldn't have let him go past 14. But again, similar to real life, I would not have, uh, I don't think he's going to get there to either of these two teams. So no, I've seen him mocked at number four, which I'm not convinced is going to happen. Although I mean, he would, he would, he'd be just the sort of thing the Giants would need. But I think there's just there are more impact players that I think the Giants will want to go for. Um, but yeah, it's I don't think IRL he's going to be a 13th or 14th selection. No, I agree. I look forward to doing this with you again in a couple of months' time and seeing. Uh, seeing what really happens and uh, when we're in draft week. So um, it'd be interesting to see. But why don't you tell everyone where they can find your work, your book, because um, you uh, wrote an amazing book that we uh, did an interview with last year and, and where they can find everything that you do. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Tweets from Ben. Um, if you're not sick of the sound of my voice, you'll find me a regular, pretty much weekly guest on ESPN's Nat Coombs show. Um, also a regular on Talk Sports NFL live Sunday night coverage, which is also a lot of fun. Um, the book is called Today in NFL History, and you can find details about that at nflhistorybook.com. If you've got Amazon Prime, um, that will give you access to the Kindle lending library, which means you can read it for free. And yes, I still get paid, so don't feel guilty about that. Um, so just go and enjoy it whichever way you can. Um, and hit me up on Twitter. I'm constantly talking. <laughs> you definitely are, but it's always uh, great content that comes out. And uh, loved uh, loved you on uh, Nat Coombs' show and and everything you've put out this year. You've uh, you really sort of raised the the college profile in, in the UK by being on there every week and talking about the college game and uh, making it easy for people to find uh, more content. So. Uh, thanks for coming on. Look forward to having you on in a couple of months' time and maybe have you on between then as well just to talk a little bit more NFL draft. Yeah, that'd be great fun. Let me know. Awesome. Great. Speak soon, guys. Cheers, Ben. Cheers, mate. Right, Rush Nation. Fire the cannons. It's time for Murph's pick. It's the 14th pick. It's the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and he sat right there. Where are you going, big man? First of all, because you said fire the cannons, the draft hat's coming on. Yeah, buddy. That's right. Let's just distinguish between host and GM. And GM. That's right. By the cameras. He's wearing it if you can't see. <laughs> you can see. I'm on camera. So as I said previously, um, was into minds here. And then Ben has uh, made my decision pretty easy here. So Don't go wide receiver. Don't with go the 14th receiver. Don't pick go receiver. of <laughs> with the 14th pick of this five-year rush. Uh, mock draft. I am going with Javon Kinlaw, interior defensive lineman from South Carolina. Now, he is a player who arguably from the practices was the most explosive and most impactive at senior bowl. He is an absolute beast, but so quick with it as well. Um, this is all going to come down to, you're talking about the number one rushing defense in the NFL last season, but Adamakun Sue if he was to resign, would be looking at somewhere in the region of nine to 11 million in cap. The Buccaneers have 86 million in cap space. There's a quarterback that's got to be paid in there. I personally think it's going to be Jameis Winston, but if it's not Jameis, it will be another QB who I think gets paid. You're then looking to bring back Shaq Barrett. Shaq Barrett's going to come in at anywhere between 12 and 16 million dollars uh, to bring back. You need to sign. Um, several other players as well, um, potentially JPP, who um, ended up the season with eight, nine sacks and he only played less than half a season. So there are players here and I just don't think there's enough money for Sue. 
So you look at a player who is explosive, an absolute unit, uh, very, very quick, gets off the line well. Um, he just can stop everything. He can play three tech and five tech, which is really, really important. Bit of diversity there. But second of all, can you imagine an interior defensive line of Vita Vea and Javon Kinlaw? Like every running back in the mm. league is just going to look at that and go, nah. It was already good nah. enough. Yeah, I mean, it was good enough with Sue and Vita Vea, but you've got another year of Vea behind him um, who's just developing into an incredible player. And now you're going to put Kinlaw next to him. Like, that, that line is going to be incredible. This, this line stopped uh, Christian McCaffrey. Uh, it stopped Saquon Barkley, okay, got injured. Uh, Alvin Kamara twice. Todd Gurley. I mean, it's it just punishing. They didn't give up. I think one, they gave up 100-yard rushing performance all season. So, Kinlaw, for me, is an easy like-for-like replacement for Sue, who potentially could comp and be better than Sue. Only slight worry with him is uh, sort of the mental side in terms of coaching and scheme. I think he's going to be someone that needs to be coached um, to really get the best out of him, but who better than Todd Bowles to do that with what he's already doing on that defense? I would, there was half a mind to me to, to take a tackle here. That's the only other position I've considered. Um, I, Mackay Becton's getting a lot of love, but with the three uh, offensive tackles, who I thought were the three best offensive tackles in this class, off the ball, Kinlaw was the guy that just stood out for me, and he was the guy I wrote down on my piece of paper earlier, and he's the guy I'm walking away with. So, uh, Buccaneers fans, be happy with the pick, and on to the next. Fire the cannons. Fire the cannons. Fire the cannons. Well, Murphy, you're going to have to introduce me. That's right. So, here with the uh, 15th pick of the NFL draft is a GM who is despaired. No, I'm not. Annoyed. I've played the game perfectly. Disappointed. (laughs) Upset. But he is representing Broncos country with full gear, hat, jersey behind him, signed, jersey, camo, uh, Salute to service, pal. Salute to service. That was the words I was looking for. It is the one and only stocks. Welcome to Five Yard Rush. Welcome to the mock draft. Where are we going? Thanks for having me, guys. Absolute pleasure to be here. So, initially, look, let's be real. The Broncos offensive line is an absolute sieve, really. And I didn't think one of the offensive tackles would make it down to me. So, I'm going to play this as if he never made it. Because, let's be fair, he's not going to get here. We need two big things. Offensive tackle is one and wide receiver is the other. And I've been toying with who to take all day. I know it's pretty much been made up for me now, the fact that three of the big guys have gone. I actually had this guy at number three. Uh, So we're heading, we're staying in Colorado and we're going to take star wide receiver, LaVisca Shainel. Fits the mold perfectly for what we need. I think Drew Locke needs that extra weapon. We've got Noah Fan a couple more years. He's going to be possibly who he was in college. Cortland Sutton's turned out to be arguably better than people thought he was going to be as, as the one. And I think plug in LaVisca right next to him. Similar build, 220, six foot two, I think. Do you know, apart from offensive line, he played in every, and quarterback. No, offensive line. He played in every single position for Colorado last season on offense. Really? Yeah. Running back, tight end, half back, wide receiver, quarterback. Tackle? Maybe not. <laughs> but they're on the line. I said yeah. offensive line. Yeah. He didn't play tackle. He might play tackle. He's a big dude. Anyway, so what he offers the Broncos is not only the big ex outside receiver, but he can also play slot. And I think mixing him up with Court and Sutton in both positions, you're offering the dual threat. I think Deshaun Hamilton and Tim Patrick didn't offer anything alongside Cortland Sutton. So by providing Drew Locke, who in his four games looked pretty decent, I think, if you provide him with another big, thick wide receiver, a decent end zone target, you've got Cortland Sutton, Shane Holt, and Fant. Yeah, I'm all aboard that. So stack up the offense. Hopefully they can keep hold of, uh, oh God, what's his name? Chris Harrison and Von Miller. And then if Bradley Chubb's, Chubb comes back, we fill a few holes on free agency. I'm all about it. Yeah, I think... Uh... Oh, 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 and actually, LaVisca Shane was going to be my pick because he was my star receiver in my winning college team last year in okay. fantasy. So. It's good to see that the GMs of teams. I am the GM, man. <laughs> I won my college. So he's coming aboard. Uh, 
it's it's definitely a pick I've seen a couple of times. Um, be honest though, if any oh, of the other three had gone were available here. So obviously Jerry Judy would love to have him because of his side speed capabilities. Rugs possibly, but I think Shane Alt fits the bill, the mould of exactly what we need. Cortland Sutton's fast and he's and he's got good steps. So I think we just need that extra size and I'm not sure any of the others offer I mean if you're gonna plug your wide receiver in at running back and have him run straight up the middle, you know he's got he's got the game to run into people to try and gain that yardage. And of the other three, I'm not sure any of those are gonna be willing to drop the shoulder and, and try and grind out the yardage. So I think Shane Alt fits the mould of what we want. I mean obviously you're gonna take Jerry Judy, but I think behind him I think Shane Alt's the boy we want. That's good. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Right then. Let's move over to the Atlanta Falcons. Yeah. Jamie from Kickers Matter. He's been sitting there patiently. He's been in my screen the entire time. Jamie, welcome back to Five Hard Rush, buddy. How you doing? Not too bad, guys. How are you doing? Yeah, really well. Really well. Yeah, you symbolised the halfway pick here. So, yeah. how do you think this draft has, has gone? And has it gone the way you would have hoped, expected? It, it, for me, it's, it's fallen pretty perfectly. Basically, the, the two, two players that I wanted are both still here. So I am, uh, I'm hoping that the actual NFL draft falls exactly like this and uh, we can get a guy that we, a position that we desperately need. Okay, so that's it. That's here it is, the 16th pick of the draft. Who are you, uh, who are you selecting for the Atlanta Falcons? Uh, the Falcons are going to select at 16, AJ Epinesa, edge rusher from Iowa. Yeah, I think that's a, yeah, I, I can see where you think that's a dream to, to get him here. I think it's a, a <laughs> steel. talent. Yeah, steel, best player available for me. Yeah. And the, in easily the biggest position to need as well. This, this, this is, has fallen pretty oh, well. It, yeah, no, it, it's fallen perfectly. It was, it was, it was a, it was a toss up between him and um, Gross Matos, but um, with Vic Beasley now, he's he, he's not going to be back next year after the Falcons have uh, put out a, a statement saying they're not re-signing him. Um, we are in desperate need of some edge rush help, and um, I think AJ can offer that, and he he can be a day one starter, which which is something that we need to pair pair alongside uh, Tack McKinley, who who's shown flashes, but. Uh, he needs to have a big year this year. Yeah. Speaking on that uh, Twitter announcement. Well, oh, my goodness. That, that <laughs> is the best thing I've seen all year on Twitter because the Falcons just absolutely owned a guy. When someone tweeted them, it went, source, question mark, and it went, literally us, comma, the Falcons. <laughs> it's, I, I'll give them credit. The Falcons uh, media team on Twitter are, pr are, are pretty good. And uh, I saw that and I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> yeah. It is great, and and I like I like Epinesa. I think he's uh, he's definitely up here for me. Top top two edge rushers in this class. I think. Yeah. He, um, he's, again, you said with Beasley going, it's a big hole to fix. Uh, that defense the last couple of years has, you know, been a bit of a letdown compared to what we know that they can do. Some of it's been injuries, yeah, some it's been been schemed. But I think uh, bringing in big guys like. Uh, Vanessa here, I think, is uh, is a solid move, and um, I, I like all the picks that the uh, NFC South teams have made. I think they all instantly make each other uh, better and stronger. So, yeah, okay. yeah, it's it's something obviously with with Beasley going. It's 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 the main it's the main need for us. And I, I I'll say one thing with regards to to the Falcons front office, they are not afraid to make a big big trade they're not um they made dimitrov made this made a trade up for for julio years ago huge trade gave up a lot and i i don't expect them to but i wouldn't be surprised if they've got um they've got young in their sights there you go yeah oh, that would be big time it would be a big one, but uh, it would mean giving up a lot. So I think they'll probably just settle with um, with AJ. Yeah, which is not bad. <laughs> no, it's not, 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 not at all. 
Oh, we'll take him then. Oh, oh, we'll, we'll take him, yeah. That's, that's not too bad. I, I, I will happily, happily welcome him. I, I agree. Um, it's been a blast having you back on. Where can everyone find you? Um, you find me on Twitter, which is, uh, what is my Twitter handle? It's at Jamie underscore Byram, B-Y-R-O-M-K-M. I'm there mainly talking NFL fantasy um, and sh- shoving out hot takes at people mostly don't agree with <laughs> you got one for us now um let me have a think uh andy dalton ends up with the patriots <laughs> his hair would match nicely i tell you what that is that is bold I can that's see a it. fit that is a fit for me wow that would be absolute fire and i'm not talking about his hair <laughs> that would be wow i'll tell you what if that, if that comes in, that'd be incredible. Uh, yeah, I'll give you a fantasy one. Lamar Jackson isn't a top six QB next year either. Yeah, I can see that. I, yeah. How dare you? Not as hot as Andy but Dalton and Pages, but still hot, yeah. spicy. Yeah. Give it, it, it's, it's, it's just regression. It's, yeah. it's, it's the fact that he had such an amazing year and you don't find many, not even the best QBs to follow up the next year. I'm not going to say he's be bad, but he's I, he's not going to put up the number. I don't think he'll put up the numbers he did this year. No, and I worry just with the style of play, the more tape he got on, I can just see someone going in with a, a bit of a late hit or someone just going in hard. And but yeah, that's the nature of, of, the, of, of how he plays, isn't it? He, 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 he plays like that. He's He's got a high risk of injury. No one wants him to, to, to get injured, obviously, but... Um, when you run around with the ball, you're going to get hit. <laughs> uh, absolutely. Never a truer word spoken. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie, buddy, thank you so much for your time. We'll chat soon. No problem. Cheers, guys. Cheers, mate. Right, on to 17. It's the Dallas Cowboys, and it's Tim from Full 10 Yards. Now, let me tell you, Rush Nation, I don't know if you can see him. No, if you certainly can't. But Tim is sitting in a room which can only be described as somewhere deep within Hampton Court. It's wooden. There's beams everywhere. Painted white ceilings. It's dim light, and he's definitely... It's attic, isn't it? Or... I don't know. I can just see six square inches of his house. But it is definitely not Dallas. <laughs> no, it's definitely not. No, I mean, it looks like an underground bunker. And I suppose they, they found the, uh, the, uh, that un- unexploded bomb the other day, didn't they? So I thought I'd uh, try it out, see if it's any good. And how was it? Yeah, it's all right. Yeah, the internet's not great. I'm literally in the middle of nowhere, but there we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You were in that problem. It's, just, it's, it's been a long standing issue, almost as long standing as uh, Jason Garrett. But that problem at least has been resolved. You came on. Oh. Rest, you prayed for him to go. He gone. He is gone. Absolutely, mate. Still, still uh, do the open tour bus. <laughs> 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 so come on, then, Tim. Seventeen. Who are your Cowboys picking? So pick 17, the Cowboys are picking Xavier McKinney, safety out of Alabama. I really liked the, uh, really wanted Javon Kinlaw there, at Murph, but you, uh, you saved yourselves from a risque opening line. I won't, I won't repeat it, but um, <laughs> you, you saved yourself with that one. Uh, <laughs> yeah, listen, look, safety position is a, is, a, is a position that Dallas have avoided for years, under, especially under the Jason Garrett era. Uh, Jeff Heath is, is likely a free agency uh, candidate, cut candidate this, this season. So, um, you know, new uh, new defensive coordinator Mike Nolan, Mike McCarthy's in. I think they're going to say, look, you know, safety position needs to be upgraded. Uh, we're getting a, a diverse athlete, six foot six one, uh, two hundred pounds. But you know, he's, he's the kind of guy that is. Yeah, if you, I don't know if you guys are familiar with mock draft or that with the website with the rape, web of radar gra- graphs. But you're not going to get. Uh, he's not going to be someone that spikes on one. Yeah, you know, one one axis he's going to be a guy that's quite high all the way around you know he can do man-to-man coverage he can do um he can he can blitz he can he can do a hell of a lot of things he can tick a lot of boxes which is what I think Dallas need to do uh, on that side of the ball because you know this is a, a team that doesn't have a lot of turnovers doesn't commit a lot of fumbles doesn't get a lot of interceptions so uh, we kind of need someone that can can do a bit of everything and help kind of sh- uh, cover up a few uh, holes on that on that defense as well so uh, I think he'll tick a lot of boxes for the Dallas Cowboys I think uh, it's a difficult position to to get right in draft mm. safety. We see a lot yeah. come into the league that don't necessarily live up to their draft hype. But having said that, if you're going to get one, one from a very stout defense like Alabama's, in, in, like you said, the the numbers and everything seem to seem to stack up. I think he's uh, 
he's a very strong pick. I can see why go here at 17. It's definitely a position of need. That secondary was at times well, thinner than <laughs> thinner than a wet paper towel, given the amount of injuries it suffered. So given the <laughs> Yeah. Depends what paper towels you got, Murph. I don't know where you're buying yours from, mate. <laughs> Definitely not got one sheet, has it? <laughs> <laughs> one sheet? Yeah, it's not bouncy. What can I say? Um... <laughs> no, I mean, we, we haven't, we haven't, we haven't uh, drafted a, a safety since like, Morris Claiborne uh, high up, and that didn't really work out for us. worked out for him. Obviously, he just won the Super Bowl on Sunday. But, um, yeah, we, we, we're not great on the, on the back end. Uh, obviously, Byron Jones as well is a bit of a concern in terms of free agency. He could uh, quite easily walk out the door, but I think they'll try and obviously keep him. But, yeah, I think uh, the other... The other uh, the other consideration was um, Del Pitt from from LSU, but he can't tackle. So you could argue that actually probably fit in quite well with Dallas uh, in on defense. But uh, yeah, I think Xavier McKinney will so fulfill quite glad. a few needs. I'm so glad someone else has said he can't tackle because that is all I've watched on him. Is, is, is the fact I've watched probably 15, 20 minutes of tape of him other than what I've seen in games of him because I watch quite a bit of SEC. And yeah, he can't tackle. No. He looks like he's trying to con- uh, consistently tackle a uh, greased up deaf guy from Family Guy. <laughs> That's who he tackles. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and his feet are constantly entrenched in concrete. A- absolutely, yeah, oh, absolutely. We have just absolutely trashed Grant Del, but no doubt he's going to go in a couple of weeks' time and we're going to eat this. But um, <laughs> Awesome well, stuff as always. We'll have you come into the studio soon as well. Yeah, looking forward to it. Yeah, looking forward to it. Um, but why don't you tell us... Um, where people can find you, get in touch, um, find out more uh, interesting facts about Jason Garrett as well. <laughs> interesting oh, I know he, he went out the window when he all those facts went out the window when he left um, yeah I am at Tim underscore Monk uh, F10Y on the Twitter uh, obviously the full 10 yard boys have been on before as well but we're at, at full 10 yards obviously we uh, dip our toes in many ponds uh, in terms of American football so all things American football uh, come over to us and we'll we'll show you a good time over there um, yeah we, we'll keep going 365 as you know Murph uh, so we've had uh, many a conversation um, so yeah, enjoy, come and join us, articles, podcasts, and uh, hopefully a bit of video content coming soon as well. Lovely. Awesome stuff, man. Well, look, uh, take it easy. We'll you too. Cheers, guys. We'll do this again in two months' time. Take it easy. All right, mate. Bye, Tim. Bye. Bye. Right, Rush Nation. Let's head back down to Miami. So after his first pick, Lee ran out onto the pitch that is still completely covered in confetti. <laughs> we got the backpack blowers out. We found him somewhere at midfield. He's back. It is worth noting that this pick was originally the Pittsburgh Steelers pick. Um, that went as part of the Minka Fitzpatrick trade. So Miami inherit that. And so with the 18th pick, Lee is back. What are you doing with it? I am, uh, I'll be honest, when the tackle started to fall a little bit, I'll be a little bit excited because I'd love to take a natural right tackle um, to protect my new franchise quarterback. But I um, decided to switch the pack a little bit after they went, and I'm going with uh, Caleb on Chase on from LSU. Um, we got plenty of holes to fill. <laughs> <laughs> quite, quite honestly. Um, but the main reason was, I think, is his explosion off the edge. And I think it plays into Brian Flores' hands of what he wants to do on the back end of the defence. So, although his, his own stats are great, they, they might not be as good as some of the other guys going a little bit higher in this draft. So, um, I don't think that matters to Brian Flores. I think he's, he's going to look at more the bigger picture. I think you, you see that when they were willing to, to pay for a, a trade flowers or someone like that. It's not about the, the, the personal stats. It's more about what effect he has on the defense as a whole. So I think, yeah, I, I have thought about taking Grace Matossin at this stage, but I mean, after doing a little bit more research on him earlier on, the biggest knock was the processing. And I just don't think the new Dolphins coaching staff is going to put up with um, bad processes over the smart guys. So I think this guy, the Kelemon Chase, was smart and explosive on the edge. That's a sick name, isn't it? Caleb on <laughs> Chase on. <laughs> Put that on your jersey. Yeah. Imagine, imagine, but that would, that would have to go to Luke Brown. Like the uh, Greek player who turned up in a Premier League once. And he didn't have like all the way around. All the way around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I Fair like enough. That. Do you know what? If I get a Dolphins jersey, I'm going to get him on the back lead just for you. You should get a Dolphins jersey. Well, I will eventually. You just get a Fitzpatrick one. No, I'm going to get my boy, K-Lav. 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 <laughs> you sure did K-Lav? Brilliant. There's less to pay for in the printing shop, isn't is the, it? If you have the K, <laughs> if you have the K be silent, it's just laugh. No. But the... 
Shut up, Matt. I'll take the humour there for you. Yeah, right. <laughs> Thanks, Lee. Speak to you in a little bit. Let's head back to Las Vegas. Ollie, I apologise earlier. I was reading a little bit and it said Chicago Bears and I didn't think you'd want to represent them, but you're not. You're back doing the Raiders. Back from the College Chats pod at 19. Who are the Raiders picking? With the 19th selection in the draft, the Oakland Raiders, sorry, the Las Vegas Raiders select Kenneth Murray, linebacker from Oklahoma. Solid. And why him? It's a big, it's a big need. Um, Isaiah Simmons would be the ultimate dream pick. And as I watched the picks get closer to pick 12, I was thinking, you know what, maybe we get Simmons at 12 and maybe we take a wide receiver at 19. It wasn't to be. Um, it's not a really deep linebacker class. Um, but for me, Kenneth Murray is the second linebacker and it's a massive need for the Raiders. Um, only two um, only two linebackers currently um, in contract in Tahir Whitehead and another guy whose name I can't remember. Um, Murray has been a tackling machine for Oklahoma. Um, plays very strongly against the run, gets into the backfield. Um, there are some concerns about his, um, his ability and coverage, but with Jonathan Abraham back, um, with the likes of Trayvon Mullen um, at cornerback, coverage isn't the primary concern. And, and for the Raiders, last year they said, if we stop the run, we can get to the quarterback. We started that process. More sacks came last year. And in drafting Kenneth Murray, it makes that process even better. Stop the run and get to the quarterback easier with uh, the likes of Cleveland Farrell and Max Crosby. I think, uh, I think you definitely made sense again. I said earlier that linebackers are underrated position. And there are that many good quality linebackers. This is a very weak linebacker class considering last year's was was quite strong. You had three or four. I mean, you had two exceptional guys at the top end of the draft. Um, but you did have a few guys after that that um, were pretty pretty good as well. So um, I think I think from Murray onwards, I mean, they, you know, you do have Patrick Queen. He's probably the only other linebacker here. I think you can consider him, what, the top 80, 90 picks? Cool. I think after that, I think you're really struggling. I After... After Patrick Queen, there isn't anyone. There isn't anyone worth considering. I've just looked at the mock draft machine, and like the next predictive one is like seventy-eight. <laughs> yeah, there's there's not a great deal of um, of first round talent. Someone like Akeem Davis gathers from uh, App State. He may make a, a push. He had a great senior ball week. He might make a push up towards the early second round, maybe even the late first round. Um, but then you look at it, like you say, Patrick Queen would have been. Um, if Kenneth Murray wasn't available, Patrick Queen would have been the pick. Um, but then you've got you've got guys like um, Logan Wilson out of Wyoming, who um, again used the All Star games to make a, a bit of a name for himself. Um, but the guys like that aren't going to aren't going to trouble the first round, and, and it really is a, a, a pressing need for the Raiders. Yeah. Perfect. Right, I said it earlier. I'm going to say it again. Ollie, why don't you let people know where they can find you? Okie doke. Um, so you can find me personally um, at OJ Hodgkinson on Twitter. Um, you'll find my writing there for the Touchdown, um, for Saturday Blitz and for the Pro Football Network. Um, and then you can find the College Chaps podcast at the College Chaps. Um, going into the season, um, the next college season, we'll be looking at a weekly pod um, discussing all things college football. Um, we'll have our first mock draft coming out. Um, we're recording that Thursday, so that should be out by uh, by the weekend, um, so keep an eye out for that. Amazing. Uh, your content's great. Uh, really enjoy what you do. You get some great guests on as well. You've had Mello on. You, um, yeah, you guys are absolutely crushing it. So uh, keep it up, big fan. And uh, yeah, we'll have to get you on to talk some, uh, some draft and combine news uh, as and when. More than happy to. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Awesome, mate. Take care. Thank you. Right, Rush Nation, let's head back to Duval. Patrick Jackson via the LA Rams is back. Who are you taking at 20, buddy? Well, uh, we're replacing some guy called Javon Romsey or something like that, who he uh, <laughs> traded to the Rams for this pick. Um, with that in mind, I was looking to target someone to fill that gap in our coverage. Um, I was torn between the two LSU guys you've got on the screen there, and I went for the one you thoroughly slated in the last quarter of an hour. I went for Grant Delpit, the safety. <laughs> yeah, just not a fan. Um, and that's fine. Um, 
I'm not I'm not a GM. I'm not a professional job analyst. I, I'm just a guy with a microphone with opinion. I'm just a senior player. I, I, do you know what? LSU have a proud record of producing exceptional defensive talent. I know because the Bucks have drafted half of them in the last sort of half a dozen years. So um, we, I think we've drafted every single linebacker that has ever played in the history of LSU football. It seems like that. Beckwith, Alexander, Devin White, <laughs> just in recent years. But we have a long tradition. And it's, I, I think with Delpit, I think with coaching you can improve, but tackling is, is an issue for me. But what, what, what do you love about Delpit here? What do you think he's going to do for the, for the Jacks? It feels like a typical Jags pick for me. So he's he's managed 60 tackles every year of his college career minimum. That looks pretty decent. He's dropped down the draft boards the second half this year due to some injury concerns, as far as I'm aware. And that um, stands up in line with uh, Josh Allen. And we saw how that ended up. Those injury concerns mounted to nothing. He had a fantastic first season. So I see him helping in the run defence more than Fulton could. And that's a bigger weakness than the past defence was last year. So that's why I went in that direction, really, in the end. Perfect. Yeah, despite the slating, he's made it off the draft board. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, before a couple of people I would kind of expect him to, to go. So, you know, it's, uh, it's very possible this could be the pick. It, it depends what happens. Um, and if Jags decide to package these two to try and go up the board and try and get somebody else. but. Um, you know, I, I, he's definitely going to go in the first round, but I'd be very surprised if Delpit falls outside of the first round, given how the safety class is not the strongest. Again, we said just about the linebacker class, the safety class is arguably worse. Um, so to get one of the top guys in the position in need, you kind of have to reach for them because it's not as deep as other positions. And I think if you'd wait until the second round, you wouldn't have got anyone. So I, I get the logic behind the pick. Yeah, absolutely. And I think I was one of several guys with their fingers crossed hoping Kinlaw fell and he was never going to fall this far. But you've got to, you know, hope for these things for a while, haven't you? <laughs> Perfect, Patrick. Why don't you uh, let Rush Nation know where they can find you? Sure thing. So my personal Twitter is Ratius underscore Johansson, or you can find me via at Snap Pod, which is uh, where you'll hear my kind of vaguely weekly NFL musings with the guys on there. <laughs> it's, an, it's an entertaining pod. Uh, definitely a good listen for those who just want to listen to something fun and uh, get a bit of insight but it's, it's similar to just being a pub with mates that's why I quite like it yeah the next one will be out on the Thursday Friday morning maybe and uh, it should have one of the best quizzes on it we've ever done so I'm looking forward to that yeah. I see excellent nice. stuff right Patrick thanks for coming on thank you good luck with the rest of it thanks very much buddy Cheers, take care Right, Rush Nation, it's one of us, one of us, one of us. We're heading over to Philadelphia, and this chap, and you can't see the Zoom feed, but he has literally been sat there religiously staring at me for the last two hours. <laughs> <laughs> Taking over the uh, GM for the Atlant- no, for the Philadelphia Eagles. It's Nick. Nick, how you doing, buddy? Sat uncomfortably looking at some of these receivers flying off the board. Um, oh, you're but, welcome. Oh, we're good, we're good. <laughs> Well, you say that. I mean, just because Philadelphia, I mean, you drafted one last year. If you don't play him, like, whose fault's that? <laughs> it didn't pan out, um, but hopefully this one will. So, yeah. awesome. Well, to like- be honest, Chris, you made my you made my pick a lot easier because I was torn between Lavisca and the guy I'm going to pick. Um, so. Thanks for that. You're welcome. So come on then, who are you taking at 21? Uh, at 21, I'm going to take T Higgins, wide receiver from Clemson. Um, it's a massive position of need for Philadelphia, despite taking a uh, Cedar White side last year. Um, obviously didn't have a good rookie season. Even in the games where his snap counts were high, there was still barely any productivity there. Um, there's concerns, obviously, with Elshon Jeffrey with his injury history, um, currently recovering from a foot injury as well, which is going to be apparently a nine-month layoff. Um, Deshaun Jackson's not getting any younger, again, coming off a season where he suffered from injury. It's just a position where they're really thin. Uh, the top three receivers on the team last year uh, were the two tight ends, Ertz and Goddard, 
and uh, Miles Sanders, um, no receiver had over 500 yards. So I'm going T Higgins, uh, ideal size for a receiver at 6'4", uh, 215 pounds, be a big mismatch for a lot of defensive backs in the NFL. Uh, 27 touchdowns in his three seasons at Clemson. Um, obviously a massive red zone threat with his height and length. Sort of, sort of drawing comparisons um, with AJ Green in terms of his size, but very similar as well to like a Kenny Golladay kind of receiver. Uh, not the quickest on his team, uh, doesn't flip the field with his speed, but he does create a lot of space with his body and his ability to contest catches. Um, so yeah, that's where I'm going. Nice. Yeah. I, I, I toyed with him, I toyed with him, and then thought, now nah, I'm going to take my boiler whisker. So I'm glad I, I, I enjoyed your gif on the chat as well, just uh, Sheldon from the Big Bang, right? <laughs> <laughs> with his paperwork, I enjoyed it. Imagine if it's exactly what was going on here. <laughs> Imagine if T Higgins had come off the board. If T Higgins would have come off, I'd have, I'd have hoped LaVisca would have fallen, but to be honest, some of these receivers that have come off, um, rugs would have been ideal. Um, I think some of them will fall a little bit further post-combine um, than what they've been selected today. So I don't suspect when we next do this that I'll be selecting T Higgins again. There's still some some good good guys there, Fulton in the second race, CJ Henderson, um, which is another area of need, but I, I can't pass up T Higgins. Um, I think he could be, of this class, one of the more successful ones in the NFL. Yeah, I think you just need a receiver to have a three-cone time similar to DK Metcalf and an oil tanker. And then you might end up with someone a bit better. Because uh, I'm not saying T Higgins is bad. He's a good, good wide receiver. But, um, you know, we saw what happened with DK. He went towards the end, second round, and he, he came out all guns blazing at the tail end of the season. And it's something that could easily happen uh, this time round as well. Nick, come on then. Why don't you let Rush Nation know where they can find you? Um, personally, you can find me on Twitter at Nick of Wigan. Um, in the back end of 2019, um, I wrote for Five Yard Rush, um, which was mainly daily fantasy sports. Um, and hopefully, you'll find me doing exactly the same thing again in the 2020 season, and uh, hopefully on a couple of pods as well. If oh, we can make it happen, guys. Listen to this dude sticking his oar in. <laughs> <laughs> I like 100% love to have you on love to have you on buddy it's been an absolute pleasure thanks for coming on stuff. cheers guys thanks you are welcome right it's time for somebody else for some hat game let's head down to Buffalo it's Mark S from the Long Snapper Pod Mark sick hat man welcome to Five Yard Rush <laughs> evening chaps thanks for having me on describe the hat for everyone who's listening it's um, it, Bills cap. yeah just stand, standard Buffalo Bills Rep, repping the merch very good Standard. It's nice. Blue. <laughs> yeah. If it's not, it, it, I'd prefer it to be the old logo, but we'll I'll take this one for now. Oh, I like the new one. Oh yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's right. Like, uh, it's, it's straight to the point. It's like Bosch. Yeah. <laughs> I just like I just like harping back to the early nineties, back when we were when you know we were relevant more often than not. Well, yeah, relevance coming is here. It's basically it's like Devin Singletree and Josh Allen, the new symbol. Very strong, very powerful, very fast. Just get your head down and get it done. Yeah, indeed. indeed. Yeah, leave the cornerback out. Tredavious. Yeah. Legend. Yeah, but he's, don't think of him as like massive power. Though. Yes, he's going to stop you. I mean, he, he's, he's not massive power. Fair. Anyway. And, like, and, all he, and all he takes is shit for not being Pat Mahomes because that's who he drafted, or drafted to, to the uh, Chiefs when they took him. So he has to deal with that a lot. Bless him. Yeah. Fair. So come on then, two little ducks, 22, who are the Bills taking? Oh, so if you thought um, Nick had it difficult trying to draft a wide receiver at 21 with all the names flying off the board, he took the last wide receiver that the Bills were going to take. Um, the Bills draft room have definitely been surprised with uh, a couple of the uh, teams drafting earlier on, taking nice shiny wide receivers when they've clearly got massive needs elsewhere, but we'll, we'll not worry about that too much, the Giants. Um, so the Bills, the Giants there. <laughs> um, so the Bills are going to draft the player that we had, uh, the third edge rusher on on our list, which is uh, Yetta Gross Matos, edge rusher from Penn State. Nice. And what what was the thinking behind 
uh, Cross Matos to take the edge here over, say, a couple of other positions? Um, so I think looking looking at the roster, the two the two massive needs the Bills have that they need to address in the first round is, is wide receiver and edge rusher. Um, it would have been a wide receiver if T Higgins had still been on the board. Um, when with him going, and I suspect this is what the Bills may take in the actual draft. This is what they might find. Um, with T Higgins going, it was down to next available need. We with the two other guys, Chase Young. Um, and AJ Espinosa already being taken. Um, Gross Matos was the the next one left. With with Jerry Hughes not being the spring chicken he used to be, Lorenzo Alexander has obviously retired. Shaq Lawson sat on the free agency list. There's no one in that squad now that recorded more than five sacks last season. Um, it's it's become a massive area of need for the Bills, and um, so it's next man up from the edge. Fair income. I think that's what, I think that, that makes sense. And as you say, two greatest positions in need. And effectively, you've taken the best player available left on this board. I imagine it's probably going to be very different when we do this in two months' time. Yeah, I would think so. Again, um, it, it depends combine-wise who features Curtis Weaver as a, a player that we were looking at. Um, obviously, Clavavon Chison is someone that, that the Bills, I think, would be interested in based on his skill set, but he was drafted earlier on. It depends what wide receivers fall and who's available. Um, but yeah, for now, it's uh, Gross Matos to fill the edge. And I think he's um, on, on my list, third, third edge rusher. I think he's a good player and I think he could do a damn good job. Um, get first contact, wins well, good length. Um, he's not quite there I think as an edge rusher from his um in terms of how consistent he is but I think could come in start quickly and do it do a good job nice adding to that add to that beastie bills defense love it yeah yeah there's some there's some talent there and um whilst we need to add on offense gross matos is who is available defense wins championships right except for this year yeah I know (laughs) Right, Mark, why don't you let Rush Nation know where they can find Joel? Um, you can find me. My personal Twitter handle is uh, this is Spark Yes, or more frequently, look out for us on the, the Long Snapper podcast, as you've got with uh, some of the other chaps here. A Super Bowl review coming out, I think, on Thursday night. Nice. Thanks very much for coming on, pal. We're sure we'll speak again in the future, and we'll definitely have you on in two months' time to uh, see where the pick goes with a bit more insight and with all the stats on hand look forward to it cheers chaps cheers Cheers, buddy take care bye 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 Bye, before we get to our next one before i just do a quick recap for those who's listening who perhaps are a bit lost and to give your vocals a little you're going from one rest i'm going to go from one just to fully update everyone i'm going to win through these very quick not going to name the schools um bengals have gone joe burrow quarterback chase young of the edge has gone to um, the Redskins, Lions picked Derek Brown, interior defensive lineman. The Giants picked Jerry Jude, a wide receiver. Um, the Dolphins picked Tua Tagovailoa. Uh, Chargers <laughs> picked Justin Herbert. For some reason, I can't say it. Uh, For some reason, it's very difficult. <laughs> I've got a lot of time to work on it. Uh, Panthers, uh, Jeffrey Okuda, uh, Arizona Cardinals, uh, CD Lamb, wide receiver. Isaiah Simmons, linebacker, has gone to the Jags. Tristan Worst, offensive tackle, has gone to the Browns. Jeremy Wills, uh, offensive tackles, come to the Jets. Uh, Las Vegas Raiders picked Henry Ruggs the third. Wide receiver, Colts went Andrew Thomas, offensive tackle. My Buccaneers, world champions in 2002. Uh, oh, <laughs> J- Javon Kinlaw, interior defensive lineman. Your Broncos have gone with uh, LaVisca Shainol, junior, wide receiver. AJ Spinetta Edge has gone to the Atlanta Falcons. Xavier McKinney, safety has gone to the Cowboys. Uh, Clavion Chasson has gone, uh, Edge Rusher has gone to the Dolphins. K Lab. Basically, yeah, Lavatory himself. Uh, Ruined that for me. K, Absolutely <laughs> ruined it for me. The K is silent. Kenneth Murray, uh, linebacker, yeah. has gone to uh, Las Vegas Raiders. The Jags, with their second first round pick, have selected Grant uh, Delpit. Grant well, can't tackle <laughs> Delpit. <laughs> yeah. The Eagles selected T Higgins, wide receiver. Because they had and to. We've just heard the Bills select Yeto, Gross Matos, Edge Rusher. Um, that is where we are. We are down to the final 10 picks, gentlemen. Let's uh, race through to number 23. Play ball at 23, slightly earlier than normal. Let's say it's the New England Patriots. Matt Inkster is making the pick from Patriots Nation UK podcast. Matt, welcome back to Five Yard Rush, buddy. Cheers, dude. How's it going? Good, mate. Good, mate. How are you? Yeah, good, thanks. <laughs> Just sitting 
well, I was out walking the dog and check, checking all the group chat and that, and I'm just, you know, pick after pick after pick. I'm like, nope, he's gone, he's gone, he's gone. So here we are at pick number 23 instead of 32, as usually happens. <laughs> <laughs> so let's hope you've done some research. Who are you taking at 23? Um, I am going with Curtis Weaver, edge rusher of Boise State. Um, and why him? Yeah. Well, as I'm saying, you know, pick after pick seems to have gone, but, you know, I could have gone QB here, as might have been the popular suggestion, um, but I believe Brady's staying, so it was then look at one of the next positions of need, which I believe to be the edge, and your man Mark there doing a great job with all of the pronunciations, um, probably better than myself and Murph could do by the sound of it. Um, I was looking at the man from Penn State, but he went, so Curtis Weaver it is. Um, thoughts on not taking uh, Terrell Lewis here? Um, I did look at him as well, but potentially his injury history goes against him, unfortunately. So um, I've stayed clear. That might change in a couple of months when we're doing this again. But yeah, this time I've stayed, stayed clear for now. Nice. That's fair. Um, had uh, Gross Matos and Weaver gone here, it was there another position you were considering? Yeah, as I say, um, QB, um, possibly looking at um, Jordan Love, I think, um, was one name I was looking at. Um, we have quite a few positions of need. Safety was another one. Uh, McKinney's gone earlier on. I was looking at him as well because um, I'm not sure. I think McCourty might end up being an expendable asset at this stage of his career, the age and the money that he's looking for, um, which, again, flipped me back round to... Curtis Weaver. Nice. Perfect. Right, Matt, why don't you let Rush Nation know where they can find you and your podcast? For myself, um, on Twitter, it's at Matt Inkster, M-A-T-T-I-N-K-S-T-E-R, and for the pod, it's Pat's Nation UK pod, um, both on Twitter. Um, yeah, that's the best place, and then filter off from there to the um, website and such like. Perfect. Thanks for coming back on, buddy. Really appreciate it. Not a problem. Uh, speak to you guys soon. Good luck. Thanks, Cheers, most definitely. Mate. Speak to you later. Right Bye. then. You covered earlier for the power cut in Carolina. He's back on for his pick. It's the New Orleans Saints. Siren Carroll is back. Siren, welcome back, man. How you doing, guys? Good. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. I've been waiting for it. <laughs> it's a long stretch of 24. I've got to be honest. I didn't think it'd take this long. <laughs> <laughs> Just like uh, draft day. That's it. Just like draft day. Lots of insight, lots of coverage. We haven't got Mayock anymore, so we have to put some filler in to make it seem like we're as smart as him. <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> so at 24, who are you taking for the Saints? Okay, for the New Orleans Saints, pick 24 in the 2020 draft. I've gone for Mackay Beckton, offensive tackle from Louisville. So what's the, what's the thinking here? wouldn't say it's the strongest need for the Saints. It isn't, without a doubt. Um, I was looking predominantly at cornerback, at linebacker, places where they're losing a lot of guys to free agents potentially, especially at corner. Eli Apple, PJ Williams, Johnson, Barry Mosley, they're all free agents. Jack Rabbit Jenkins is there, but he's 31. He's like on, I think they're on the hook for $11 million with him this year, so he's a cup candidate. They very much could have gone uh, Christian Fulton or your boy Murph, um, CJ Anderson down at uh, Florida. Uh, he's got all the length in the world, can go up against those big wide receivers from Tampa Bay and Atlanta, but and then linebacker, of course, AJ Klein, Josh uh, Martin, they're both hitting free agency. I think Mante Teo is as well. And there's some options there too. But all the Saints need to do is draft for upside. Um, two years ago, they went for, uh, for Marcus Davenport and the edge rusher. They made an aggressive trade up to go and get him. He's, he was a project. I think they're going to do the same thing on the offensive line as well. Now, one of the, their offensive line is one of the best in the league, I would argue. Tone Armstead on the left tackle, Ryan Ranchick at right tackle. But on the interior, they're losing guys. Andres Pete is a free agent. I don't think he's quite panned out how they wanted him to. Patrick Amane is also going. Um, Mackay Beckton, a lot of people saying he's a walk-in straight away, starting left tackle. I don't think he's quite ready yet. I think the sky's the limit for this guy. Um, his upside is off the charts. Um, but he's got loads of length. His arms are huge. He, he's an absolute run more. I think they'll kick him inside, play him at left guard, um, in this situation anyway, should I say. Um, absolutely dominate on the ground, help whoever's the new quarterback maybe. 
be, uh, under centre there. Uh, and then when he's ready, move him out to the tackle spot. If, if one of those other guys uh, head off elsewhere, then also perfect for a swing tackle too. Yeah. I, I, at the end of the day, he's easily, looking at this board now, <laughs> he's easily the best player on the board. Oh, uh, yeah. Daniel Jeremiah had him uh, going to the Giants at four. Kyle Krabs had him going to the Giants at four. I appreciate this is really early and when we do this in two months' time, I would be incredibly shocked if this is to pick one way or the other because he will either fall out of the first round completely or he'll cement himself as a top 12 pick. Oh, I completely agree. I think if he's there at 24, I think Sean Payton will run from Louisiana town to pick in himself. <laughs> yeah, I completely agree. I completely agree. Thanks, I appreciate it, buddy. Why don't you let Rush Nation know where they can find you in your work? Oh, everywhere. Um, I am one third of uh, the Collapsing Pocket podcast, which you can find at Pocket Crumble. Um, my, my own personal Twitter handle is NFL Draft Side. And of course, go and check out the Touchdown. See you all our good work over there. Keeping it 100, as always, my man. <laughs> no worries, mate. Pleasure. Thanks for coming on, buddy. Mate. Speak to you in a little bit. See you soon. Right, from one touchdown to the other, it's Dan. And he's here representing the Minnesota Vikings. Dan, welcome to Five Yard Rush, buddy. Hello, Stocks. How are you, mate? I'm good, buddy. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm a little bit conflicted picking for the Vikings, but we'll, we'll make it work. <laughs> you'll be all right. I'm sure you'll be fine. I, I like that Sai managed to somehow explain picking a tackle for probably the best tackle tandem in the league, but I'm going to get over the fact, the fact I can't pick Beckton for, uh, for the Vikings now. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, this is quite a strong position to be for the Vikings. Uh, they need a lot of O-line help, really. Um, but he's uh, he's sort of read into your mind as who you're going to pick and decide to snipe you. Maybe he'll offer you a trade after the draft, but why don't you try and get yourself uh, something that you can potentially trade uh, to help him? That's that's not the worst, worst shout at all. Maybe you should just take a quarterback so I can send it to him, but I, I don't think they're going to do that. Um, so... Shall I go through a couple of uh, considerations first, or do I go yeah. with the pick first? Uh, go with the pick first, then the considerations. Okay, so pick is Christian Fulton of LSU cornerback. Okay. Um, and why not CJ Henderson here? Uh, purely uh, a personal preference, to be honest. Um, I think... Fulton is is pretty versatile in what he does, um, and yeah, I just I, I liked I liked his game more than I did with Henderson. So yeah, nothing nothing too illuminating there, unfortunately. Fair enough. And then considerations. <laughs> you said you had some. Let's have it. Yeah. So I mean, to be honest, my main considerations went in the last few picks. So their cap situation is awful. And honestly, if we were doing trading here, I think they're probably best off trading back and and taking up some some cheap talent in the second round um, or some extra cheap talent in the second round rather. Uh, they're already, I think, 12 million over the cap. So Everson is, is more than likely gone. So I think edge rush is probably a decent need. But given that we've just had a big rush on those, there wasn't anyone for me to pick there. So I think uh, Yeter is probably a good, a good option for them if he's there. Uh, Epenaz is probably a pipe dream. Um, haven't seen too much of Curtis Weaver, to be fair. Um, I wasn't expecting him to get picked this highly, but players like Del Pitt, I think, would also help them in the secondary. Um, and with Harrison Smith hitting 31, that's probably not a bad one to have in the background to help them out. Um, they do, as you know, have a Pro Bowl uh, cornerback in Xavier Rhodes. Anyone that actually watched him probably realizes he isn't a Pro Bowl player. Um, he got on the team. Huh? He got on the Pro Bowl team. Okay, okay fine. He isn't that good of a player. Is, I mean, is he what was I the 114th be. out of 120 ranked quarter defensive packs last season. So, you know. So, yeah, I'm not, I'm not really going out on a limb there. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah 114th ranked PFF defensive back out of 120. <laughs> So, yeah, so any any casual fans that are going, hang on, they've got an all pro cornerback by they picking another one, that's that's why. Um and yeah, I'm not sure that the Mike Hughes pick of a couple of years ago has given them that that superstar going forward. So I think Christian Fulton's one for the future for them to to carry on in the DB position. Uh, unfortunately for my Packers and the rest of the North. 
<laughs> yeah, I, th- I think that's fair. I think at the end of the day, you can't go wrong with LSU talent. I think, you know, we said this earlier, they've had some great defensive players come out of the draft and uh, Fulton's a solid pick. He's, I don't think he's got the ceiling of maybe a couple of other cornerbacks in this draft, but he's certainly right. got a very safe floor. I think he will be um, more than adequate for a few years to come. Yeah, and they've got a lot of talent on their roster anyway. So, you know, as, as Bucky Brooks or Jeremiah say, often you, you just need to be picking doubles in the first round and making sure that you've got that, that solid starter in there. So, yeah, good starter. Perfect. Right, Dan, thanks for jumping on and taking the Vikings, considering you're a Packers fan. Massively appreciate <laughs> that one. Why don't you let Rush Nation know where they can find you and your work? Of course, yes. So I'm at Dan Gorolov on Twitter, uh, and you can find our work as a collective at the Touchdown NFL at the Touchdown dot co dot uk. Nice. Thanks, matey. I'll speak to you uh, soon, and we'll do it again in a couple of months' time. Excellent. Cheers, boys. Take it easy, Cheers, Dan. Take it easy. Right then, let's kick it back to the studio. It's our boy Lee. Picking at 26 for the Dolphins once more. And this one shocked me. I've seen it already. Yeah, this one came in from... Um, so, the, this was Houston uh, trade for this. Um, Who, but, funnily enough, could do with a player that Lee's going to pick. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Just to run it in. Um, yeah, I had a few players left on, on my list to watch out for. Uh, most of them started to go. I started with... Panic. I don't think the Dolphins actually. <laughs> it's a panic. I'm gonna lie. Um, I don't think the Dolphins made three picks in the first round, so I don't really think this is this is an issue. Um, I see it's moving around a lot all night actually, um, but I decided to go with DeAndre Swift running back from Georgia because I can't watch Caleb Ballard run anymore. <laughs> I mean, he can run in the first place, but. You know, attempt to run anymore. <laughs> so, unless, unless we sign someone in free agency, maybe that Kenyon Drake fella from, from Arizona. Um, He's not a good fit for the scheme. <laughs> um, yeah, I think it's just, just a case of, I'd say, the best running back available. Do you um, think he's the best running back available? I, I think it helps that he's had not a huge workload in college. I think the longevity kind of swings it a little bit for me. Okay. Um, I think he, he had his previous year last year, 196 carries. So, yeah, it, it produces pretty good speed, power, and agility. I mean, I, I just think it's kind of a safe pick. Do you know what I mean? I just, I just want to go out there and get more than one yard carry. That's it. I, I'm, not ask, I'm not asking the rest of stuff. Like, but it's sort of Caleb Balazs. Wait, sorry. I should say, award-winning Caleb Balazs. That's right. He's got one, actually. <laughs> He's stuck, man. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, I think, really, I'd love to take some O-linemen. My, my personal preference is, as a Dolphins fan, to take two or high in the draft and then use every other pick on a lineman. I don't care. Though. I'm just going to take as many linemen as possible. Fill it out. We, we watched it get Ryan Tannehill killed. You see what he's doing behind a good O-line. I, I just, I don't think you can risk repeating it. So I think, ideally... They probably move up or move back or address this in free agency. But yeah, they'll, they'll go a little bit different and uh, take a running back to replace Barrage. Perfect. Yeah. Right, Rush Nation, come on then, Lee. Where can they find you in the interwebs? At Five Yard Lee on Twitter or here, sitting in the edge of the studio. Damn straight, Rush Nation. <laughs> the man behind the glass. He is the old He's man. He's the center tonight. He's made three picks more than anybody else. He's not making a fourth. Don't worry about that. <laughs> well, he could trade back. No. Last no. year I traded back into the first round. You That's did, right, you yeah. did. <laughs> so I told you, it's not beyond the realms of possibility. Who did you take with that pick? Drew Locke. That's right. Then look how good he turned out to be. <laughs> I mean, he's very good at doing rock and top. <laughs> he can do the fights on well on the bench. <laughs> That's what we know. How dare you? How dare you? That's true. That's a compliment. Okay, not fair. many people can do a good fight song. Right, Rush Nation, let's head over to Seattle for the 27th pick. We've got Duncan Terry on from 99 Yards. Duncan, welcome to Five Rush, buddy. Hey, how are you? Good, how are you? Yes, Grant, thanks, Grant. Can you tell who I'm picking for? Yeah, yeah, the, uh, that's a great Seattle Seahawks Union Jack for the people <laughs> who can't see at home. Nice. That's good. Good to, good to catch up again. I was on your uh, Lombardi Live Super Bowl special, which I'll let you plug in in a moment, so it's good to to catch up again, but this time we're drafting for your beloved 
Seattle Seahawks. You were on last year. Do you remember who you picked last year? Oh, gosh. Now you're asking. No, I've got no idea. I'm sure they didn't pick them, though. I have to go through the archives and let you know. <laughs> <laughs> so let's let's get on to this year. At 27, who are the Seahawks going to take? Well, make no mistake, they will trade the pick. Obviously, that's what they do every year. Um, but this guy might still be available. It's just Jones. Uh, he's going to play tackle. He's, uh, we've got Jermaine to play. He, he's, if he stays, I'll be shocked. Um, there's definite holes in the defence. Uh, Clown is a free agent. Reed's a free agent. And they've got Paul for not re-signing their big free agents, aren't they? Um, Earl Thomas, hit one, not bitter. Um, so yeah, I mean, he's got some, so he, he's got potential to be a franchise left tackle for Dwayne Brown, and he's, uh, he's not young, but he's not ready. He's got some technique issues, probably, you know, he's, he's not quite there, but to play right tackle and, and if he should move over to the left, I'd be very happy with that. It's sort of past the line, I don't think it's that bad of, uh, you know, winning in the trenches. So yeah, he's put, no, solid pick again. You're looking at O line available. As you say, they're probably not going to make this pick. He's quite easily the best O line player available on the board. Mm. As we know right now, this could change with the uh, combine and, uh, and things to come. But, you know, I think he's, it's, it's a good position for Seattle to be thinking about drafting here. If they did draft here, I can't imagine. Unless they get a position, uh, a player they really love, I can't imagine them drafting anything other than O line in the first round. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of players available. You know, you've still got Austin Jackson on the board, but uh, I, I was looking at Trey Adams until I, you know, he's really been projected quite low because of the injuries. Uh, I fancy some defensive ends, but they were off the board. I wasn't this pleased that I didn't have to pronounce uh, Bryce Matos' his first name. Um, so yeah, yeah, O line definitely. Excellent stuff. Well, look, um, you've just done the Lombardi Live podcast previewing the uh, Super Bowl. You had an amazing array of guests, which you were kind enough to let me uh, lower the tone and gate crash. So appreciate that. It was good, wasn't it? It was very good. Very really well. <laughs> um, you're being kind because you're <laughs> listening, so I'll take that. <laughs> um, but where can people find that? Where can people find your work and, and everything that you're doing? Well, you can, uh, you can find the podcast, uh, it's on iTunes, it's on Spreaker, it's uh, I've got a Twitter account, at Live and Lombardi. It's still worth checking out just because it was absolute quality. It's got some great guests on there. 17 different people, 13 different uh, you know, members of the UK media, uh, all different places, uh, podcasts, websites, and stuff. So it's really good. But uh, yeah, mainly I'm like 99 yards. It's the exact same on Twitter, at 99 yards. Um, yeah, looking forward to the off season. Perfect. Thanks for coming on, buddy. Appreciate your time. Hey, anytime. See you next time. Meet you in a couple of months. Right. <laughs> yes. From 199 yards to another one. It's Adam Barton picking at 28 for the Baltimore Ravens. Adam, welcome to Five Yard Rush. How are you doing? Hello, I'm good. Thanks. How are you? Yeah, really good. Really good. You've uh, been patiently waiting. Appreciate it. <laughs> no problem at all. So, with 28, could have been 32. Flake I was going to say, this is the earliest the Ravens possibly could have picked, and I was very disappointed that we are picking quite so early. But um, with the 28th pick, we select Terrell Lewis, Edge from Alabama. Yes, love that pick. Love that pick. Why did you go him? Well, I've got to be honest, when it was getting through the, the late teens, it was uh, getting a bit uh, a bit of a, a worry for me. I had uh, Clavon Chase on uh, uh, Kenneth Murray. Um, Gross Mato, uh, Matos, I don't know the pronunciation on that one, and Curtis Weaver go off the board, which uh, worried me a bit. Um, but from there, there were there were three obvious holes to um, to fix. There's obviously uh, replacing Terrell Suggs a year later, which where where we're going with Terrell Lewis. Um, looking at linebacker to replace C.J. Mosley, um, and Patrick Queen was another uh, possibility I was looking at. Or um or cornerback uh, with Jimmy Smith unlikely to, and Brandon Carr unlikely to be re-signed. Then you've got uh, Trayvon Diggs or C.J. Henderson still on the board. Uh, so those those were the possibilities. Um, the reason I went with <laughs> sorry the reason I went with Lewis is obviously he's explosive and long and able to uh, disrupt disrupt the pocket and passing lanes. Um, he's got a real really good burst. Um, and he's willing willing to attack inside. 
Yeah, I would love to see CJ Henderson paired up with Marlon Humphrey. That would be yes. sick. And Marcus Peters. Oh, yeah. I was going to say, you got Marcus Peters. Okay. So I don't think trade attachment. baffles me. I forget it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I, I think that would have been a great one if Marcus Peters not been traded there. But yeah, I think, I think it was, again, really solid pick. You're talking about someone who uh, is coming up a great uh, defensive line, uh, byproduct of excellent coaching. He's someone who you can plug and play uh, day one into what is already a very good team. Definitely, and uh, the Ravens desperately needed need pass rush. I know it's it's been great this year being an attacking team rather than defense first. But uh, I, I don't think people realise quite how uh, short they are on on resources, and th- the pick um, could could change a lot depending on what happens with with Matt Judon. Um, so I, I was going to say actually, it depends. I, I, it wouldn't surprise me at all if they don't pick at twenty eight, whether it's um, drafting uh, trading up. To, to get a real blue chip pass rusher or trading down if if there is no one available, which is obviously their their usual move. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Right, Adam, why don't you let Rush Nation know where they can find you? I know the guy previous to you just said it. Why don't you say it again? <laughs> sure. Well, it's actually from this podcast last year that I uh, started writing for Ninety Nine Yards. So thanks very much for that, guys. Um, uh, so you can find me at 99yards.com and my personal Twitter account is at abarton93. Brilliant. Wow. Yeah, amazing, mate. I'm glad that that's what it's out You wrote some, some great stuff. You you went to um, the opening of the Spurs Stadium there, did some coverage of the Academy as well, did some interviews as well. And uh, yeah, you, you're hosting that podcast from time to time now as well. It's it's awesome to see. Yeah, thanks very much. Awesome, mate. You. Speak soon. Take it easy. Cheers. Right then, on to 29. The High Flying Tennessee Titans, and we've got Adam Foxcroft from the Long Snapper. Adam, welcome to Five Yard Rush, buddy. Thanks for having me. Um, good evening to you. It's been, it's been a long evening. Um, You're telling me. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, this is this is worth the wait. Um, you know, I I don't want to envy the Bengals, but you, know, you you turn up at the very start. You've got an easy choice where you, you've got the pick of anybody, and then you take the rest of the night off. Yeah, and, and there's probably at home, cup of tea, chillaxing, <laughs> you know, it doesn't matter what happens. But then again, he's missed it all. Yeah, but also, they don't win any games. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> so, it, it's all right having a nice, easy draft, but, you know, chances are they're probably not going to win many more games than they did this season. Yeah. I know I preach the whole equality thing, but that was just me trying to put a positive spin on things. Now we're like two hours, 15 into this. It's two like, hours, 15? Yeah. <laughs> Bro, you need a clock watch. <laughs> so come on then, pick 29, Titans, where are you going? Well, Adam Barton just before me has... Well, I'm, I'm not going to blame him because I was surprised Terrell Lewis fell as well as he did. And he was somebody that I, I had my eye on optimistically. Uh, but there seemed to be a run on, on edge rushers, which which could be a need for the Tennessee Titans. It's a, it's a bit tricky and it's interesting doing it at this stage just after the Super Bowl because we don't know what free agency is going to do and we don't know what the combine is going to do. But in the Titans case, there are a few big names who may or may not sign, sign contracts, um, you know, Tannehill and Derek Henry included. But on defense, I think is, is where the Titans need to, need to look in the, the draft or the first round of the draft anyway um edge is a bit of a need but just sort of based on who's left really um there was as i say a run on edge rushes um quite a few good looking cornerbacks left on the board at this point and i am going to select or the tennessee titans are going to select cj henderson uh from the florida gators love 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 this pick love it he is a phenomenal player. Why don't you explain why you picked him? And then I'll share a little bit. Well, partly because Terrell Lewis just went. But, uh, <laughs> I mean, it, it feels like a great value pick for 29. I mean, you know, short of Akuda, um, of the cornerbacks that are available, I think it's he looks phenomenal. Um, just from you know, what, what little bit of film I've seen of him, he just, he just seems to just have the hands to do the job. He has the speed, the agility. Um, from 
what I've read, I mean, there's only really question marks about tackling, but that seems fairly standard for, for cornerbacks coming out of college. Um, it's uh, going back to the, the Titans needs, potentially a cornerback is a hole if, the, if Logan Ryan's not re-signed in particular, but even if he is, you can't have too many, too many good cornerbacks. Um, the defense, I mean, there, there will be you know, potentially the defensive coordinator positions up in the air for the Titans. Dean Pease is retired. We may not have one and Mike Rabel may do it himself as it, as it turns out. Um, but yeah, just a, a bit of really exciting, exciting talent to go alongside a Dory Jackson. Um, as I say, Logan Ryan, we don't know. Malcolm Butler getting older. Position that that's a bit more cover is needed. Yeah, he, he is a phenomenal corner. He uh, watched a lot of him being a, a, a Gators a lot. Um, great in press man coverage, which is something Titans do quite a bit of. Great hands, um, does very well in coverage. Um, tackling is a bit of an issue, but I think it is for most corners entering the league anyway, because the standard of uh, player they're going to be up against is like nothing they've really seen. I mean, to be fair, he's he has come across some of the the best wide receiving talent sort of in college being in the SEC, but it's still going to be a level up from there. But I think the part of him that is massively underrated is he has an excellent, excellent footballing brain. Like he just, yeah. he can just take coaching. You can see the adjustments. I've watched him really grow in his three years at Florida. Um, sometimes he does get a knock and a little bit of an injury, but um, he just, you can just see his development year on year and he really takes coaching in very well. And considering that you've got Mike Vrabel there, we don't know, as you say about the DC, but he's going he's gonna to literally hit the books early. He's going to absorb everything. And he has the potential to be a real good cornerback, pro bowl level cornerback for, for years to come. I think he's an exceptional player, personally. I'm getting excited about this. Isn't, isn't even real. <laughs> <laughs> he, I mean, I'm slightly biased with Kate as a lot, but I, I, do, I do really like him. I think he's... He, you know, that, that D last year for the Gators was, was good. It was a big reason why they won 11 games. And, and he also played a big part in that. So, yeah, be excited. He's a, he's a good player. Definitely go watch a bit more of him. I don't think he makes it to 29. But if he does, he's an absolute steal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I agreed. And that was, that's one of the big reasons for the pick. I mean, you, you can't, can't ignore talent, especially if it's value for the pick you've got. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Murph, you fired up Adam. And he's excited about it. Adam, why don't you let people know where they can find your work? Uh, I, I, I don't know. Work might be a stretch. Um, <laughs> at, at AD Foxcroft is me on Twitter. Um, as you say, I'm with, with Mark and, and Pat, you heard earlier on the Long Snapper podcast. Uh, you can also, if you're a Titans fan, and there are a few of us in the UK, that we've started doing a podcast this year, at the Transatlantic Titans. I've been on that as well, at Transatlantic TN on Twitter. Um, there you go. We'll pick up another listener or two, maybe from this. Who knows? Should Let's hope. hope. Fingers crossed. Let's hope. Adam, thank you so much for coming on, buddy. Appreciate your time. Pleasure. Um, yeah, look forward to hearing this in its entirety. It's been a lot of fun. Well, thanks for hanging on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no worries. It's been the longest way most so far. So, <laughs> catch you in a in a few months. Cool. Look forward to it. Thank you, mate. Cheers, guys. All right. Right, Rush Nation, it's time for the pack to make their pick, and it's one of us. Rich King's on the line. Rich, how you doing, bruh? I'm good. How are you guys? Yeah, good, good. How long have you been listening for, Rich? Uh, about an hour. Fair, okay. I thought you might have literally just jumped on and you was going to get some. <laughs> no, no, I've, I've, I've been on for a while. I've been uh, diligently entering all these picks into my sheet, so... Okay, so what's your sheet saying? Pick thirty. Where are the Green Bay Packers going? Um, well, <clears throat> we've we obviously have needs a wide receiver and uh, linebacker. I was considering going for Justin Je Jefferson, but ultimately I couldn't look past Patrick Queen, linebacker. Yeah, LSU. Um, yeah, LSU linebacker. Uh, biggest, I think it's a big need for us, especially if we don't re-sign Blake um, Martinez who is uh, due to leave during free agency. I'm hoping that we are able to cover the wide receiver position in free, free agency. 
Um, so it's an interesting off season for the Packers. We've got a couple of players who could be on their way out. Um, yeah, uh, Brian Beluga's aging. He could be on his way out. Um, but I think based on where the board is, he's Queen's a fantastic pick for us. Solid, solidifies the middle of the middle of the, the linebacking core for us. So that's where we went. Like it. Amazing. Yeah, a solid pick. And uh, he comes from a long tradition of LSU linebackers that have entered the league. And um, he's someone that's going to be uh, definitely a solid pick. There is some upside there. But again, I think he's, he's going to have a good career in the NFL. Yeah, that's what I was kind of hoping for. <laughs> <laughs> right, Rich, why don't you let Rush Nation know where they can find your work? Uh, you can find me at Rich King FF. Um, yeah, and at Five Yard Rush. Oh, you're too kind. You got some other stuff out there. Plug yourself. Go for oh, it. Okay, I'll plug myself. So uh, it's obviously that's enough. King, that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, King Fantasy Sports, which you can find us on Instagram and Twitter now at uh, KFantasy underscore Sports. Um, and yeah, we've got some exciting, exciting things coming up. Uh, I've, I've been recently working on a draft tool that integrates with Sleeper, so it's a live update for any draft that you're taking part in. Amazing stuff. Sounds good, mate. Well, thanks for coming on, buddy. We'll talk soon. Yeah, take it easy. Speak to you later, Rich. Cheers, buddy. Bye. Right, Rush Nation. Let's head over to the Super Bowl runner, runners up, the San Francisco 49ers picking at 31. Last second, the last pick of the first round, guys, and we've drafted in friend of the pod, Ben Rolf. Ben, how you doing, man? All right. I logged on about two hours ago, realised I couldn't listen to Murph for this long, fell asleep, and uh, I'm back. Well, appreciate you uh, waking up. Appreciate it. Yeah, you've, it sounds like you've been having a good laugh. I've been on 45 minutes, and you guys are doing a great job to still be holding it together after this long. <laughs> Thanks, mate. It's it's a lot of fun, though. We get to, it's basically, it's just an excuse for all of us to get all our mates on and just have a chat. So it's like uh, coming up with a good excuse. So the fact we get to do this twice is is a pleasure. Yeah, try edit in it. <laughs> <laughs> it's been pretty smooth. It has been very smooth actually, and uh, there's only two people left, and I'm I'm worried about the last guy. But Ben, that isn't you. So we're pick 31. Where are the San Francisco 49 is going. Uh, actually, it was a no-brainer at this point. It was Trayvon Diggs. There was no one else even left on my list. All of the other corners had gone. Realistically, the uh, the guys are interior offensive linemen that I was probably looking at, and not not at this pick. They're just they're, it's a great position for the for it has to be, and they can really go best player available. And I mean, you could look at a wide receiver if one fell, but again, no one that's there is really that important. And Diggs just fits this scheme wonderfully. He is primarily his own player. As Adam said a little while ago, tackling issue, but that's an issue for all corners. So I kind of just plug that off because at this point, you're going to see how they develop with coaching. What's most important is they fit the scheme that Robert Saller runs. He's still going to be there. He's going to play in that scheme. He's going to play on the line. He's physical. He's tall. He can really interrupt the pass. I, I think he could be a starter from day one and they need that. 100%. Richard Sherman, he don't... Uh, no, I think Sherman's uh, still there. I just think on the other side. More in the bowl. Yeah, but he was great the rest of the postseason. He was, he was. Okay, fair. Maybe I wrote him off a little bit too soon. <coughs> yeah, I like it. I like the pick. I'm all aboard. Also, can I just call you out for not picking up the fact that a Baltimore Ravens person picked a combination of um, Ray Lewis and Terrell Suggs in their name, and you didn't even comment on it. I just, I just, I knew that's who they were picking because they have to pick someone that combines the only two good players they've ever had in history before Lamar Jackson. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I don't like. I thought about it, and then was just thinking like, glazed over me. Yeah. I just, I just thought, yeah, I could do, but. This is, this I got a lot of time to think sat here. <laughs> um, I was too busy excited because the new CJ Henderson was coming up next. <laughs> so, Ben, thanks for coming on, man. Appreciate your time. Why don't you uh, let Rush Nation know where they can find all your great work? Right. So, I'm currently working on a lot of XFL stuff. And uh, it's, a, it's become a little bit sad how much of the XFL I know and how much many of the players I can reel off. 
I have wrote about a preview of the season for the touchdown. So a lot of my work you can find there. We are absolutely churning through some off-season previews. We've got about 10 or so left that we're hoping to get through by the end of the end of this month. You can also find me at Pro Football Network where I do a bit of betting. I'm going to do a bit of DFS for the XFL because I'm a sadist. Um, <laughs> I'm also a Roto Baller for various different things, Odds Checker US, and I'm very excited that I'm going to be having some work featured on the Action Network in the coming few weeks, so I'm really looking forward to that. Amazing stuff, Al. Congratulations. And, uh, yeah, you do certainly pump out the work. You do, man. You uh, hustle and grind. Appreciate it. It's, uh, you've got a lot of great content. You're currently doing all your uh, uh, post-season reviews of each team as well, which is, which is banging. Yeah, my wife is not keen on what uh, on me taking more job. She's just shaking her head routinely from the other side of the room. Man, thanks for coming on, Ben. Appreciate your time and, and thanks for waiting or oh, waking up. Waiting. No problem. Good yeah. work, guys. Keep keep up the good work. Brilliant. Well, we'll speak to you soon, Ben. Soon. Take it easy. Right, Rush Nation. We've made it. It's the very end, and we've drafted in Kansas City Chiefs' biggest. No, I'm joking. It's Ash from Five Yard Rush, but he is picking on behalf of the Kansas City Chiefs. Ash. Thanks for waiting it out, buddy. How you doing? I am very good, thanks. How are you guys? Yeah, we're good, we're good. Uh, if you take anybody but a running back here, I would be massively disappointed. Well, it's, no, I'm not taking a running back, although I was looking at one. Um, no, I am picking for the Chiefs. I would love to be picking for the Steelers, but the less we talk about their season, the better. Um, but with the final pick of the first round, the Kansas City Chiefs select Damon Arnett, cornerback from Ohio State. Um, it was a very close call between him and um, Dobbins, uh, in all honesty. Uh, I thought Dobbins is more of a luxury pick for them. But if you look at the Chiefs in the off-season, they, the main issue they're going to have is cornerback. They're potentially losing Breland, more Claiborne and Fuller, Kendall Fuller, all in the free agency. Obviously, it could all change in a matter of months. But as we stand at the moment, They've only got two cornerbacks signed on for next year, and one of those is a sixth-round rookie. So the options slowly dwindled as we were getting further down the uh, down the draft. But Damon Onet was always one that was on my list. Obviously, being an Ohio State fan, um, maybe a bit favoritism, but he's a fifth-year senior, which you don't see very often nowadays. Um, he was going to declare last season, but he got convinced to stay another year. Uh, and he played in pretty much every game um, with a broken hand um, and still managed to take an interception to the house. So that says a lot for his commitment to the game. Um, not the biggest, not the fastest, but he has got good um, turn of speed. Um, and he is pretty athletic as well, um, considering when you, when, you, when you see him, you, you don't fully expect that. Um, definitely best in zone coverage. Um, he can play man coverage and he has played man coverage for, for Ohio, but yeah, his game is, is more suited to zone coverage. Um, and much like a lot of the quarterbacks we, we were talking about earlier, um, tackling isn't his strongest suit, but he's not afraid to get into the running line. Um, yeah, that's, that's why I went for them. I think it was an easy choice. The running back would have been a nice commodity for them to have, but they've got, they've got more needs across the, across the board before they look at running back in all honesty. Yeah, completely agree. I just thought you were going to go J.K. Dobbins as an Ohio State fan. And... Well, it was out of two Ohio State players um, <laughs> and Biggs, but unfortunately he went the pick before, although I did try and uh, convince Ben to take him, but he wasn't having none of it. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, that's a great pick for the Chiefs. And like you said, they do definitely need corner help. Yeah, yeah, 100%. I think they've, they've almost got to do it, unless they trade trade out, the, the which often the last pick of the first round does. But... I think with, with the need they've got, if any one of the five, because cornerback is very deep um, this draft, I think they'll 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 have a pick of maybe one or two, hopefully. Well, not hopefully. If I was a City, Kansas City fan, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> right, man. Appreciate your time. Thanks for waiting on so long. Uh, it yeah, was... just uh, fourth fourth pick. I I came on, so it's been a been a long haul, but I've very much enjoyed it. Well, I appreciate your time. Why don't you let Rush Nation know where they can find your work, although they should already know. 
Yes, well, you can find my work uh, on the Five Yard Rush website. I've been, I have been off for a couple of months with moving and stuff, but I will be back strong in the summer and into next season. Um, and you can also find me on Twitter at addicted to fantasy football. No, addicted to FF is what my Twitter <laughs> handle is. Nah, Great, man. man, it's good to have you on. Good pick, yeah. Jeeps. Uh, smashed it as always. Although you couldn't, you couldn't help yourself and pick a one of the many other fine institutional schools out there. But you know, I can, have you have your parents son as a Ohio, as a Ohio, Ohio State fan because it probably isn't going to get any better anytime soon. Oh yeah, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> 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 Cheers, lads. Thanks, buddy. Take easy, it easy. Mate. Bye. Yeah. And that's it, Rush Nation. We're done. We've accomplished thirty-two again. Yeah, uh, it's been a heck of a ride, probably a bit longer than I think we thought it would no, be. Look, listen, it's been great. Yeah, I, to be honest, it's it's interesting. I've learned a lot doing this personally, listening to everyone. There's some really big takeaways here. One was not as many QBs in this taken as expected or in other mocks. I was surprised it was at three after we had three of the first six picks. Surprised Jordan Love fell, but... I think it's probably the right way. I think the board's gone reasonably well. People sound very happy, not just with the picks they've made, but actually the way the board fell. Uh, a lot of wide receivers came off early. Yeah, they did. Um, no, only one running back off the board. Perhaps a little surprising, but I think that's a good thing. I think that's the way that... Um, you should build your it, team. Yeah, you should build your team, especially from a roster construction perspective, at least until the next CBA. Um, I'm just going to run through the picks quickly. I know it's been a long time. Can I do it? You've done the last two. Feel free to do it. (laughs) You've got to scroll whilst I read. Go on then. Okay, so at one, Joe Burrow went to the Bengals. At two, Chase Young went to the Washington Redskins. At three, Derek Brown to the Lions. At four, the Giants took Jerry Judy. Lee's Dolphins at five took Tua. At six, Justin Herbert. Tua who, sorry? No, no, that's how you do it. You don't pronounce the last name. You just say Tua. Everyone knows who he is. What, to, to a to go by over. And you've done it again. At six, the Chargers took Justin Herbert. At seven, Jeffrey Okuda went to the Panthers. At eight, the Arizona Cardinals took C.D. Lamb, the first wide receiver, and or was it the second? Anyway, that's the start of the rot for me. At nine, the Panthers took Isaiah Simmons. At ten, the Browns took Tristan Wirfs. At eleven, the Jets took Jedrick Willis. Wills. At twelve, the Raiders took Henry Ruggs the third. At 13, the Colts took Andrew Thomas. At 14, the Bucks, via those cannons, took Javon Kinlaw. At 15, my Broncos took Laveska Shainolt. 16, the Falcons took AJ Espinaza. 17, the Cowboys took Xavier McKinney. 18, damn it, I've got my boy's name wrong. At 18, the Dolphins took K. Lav. Oh, now I've ruined it. Yes! K. Simon. K. Lav Chason. 19, the Raiders took Kenneth Murray. At 20, Grant can't tackle Delpit went to the Jaguars. At 21, the Philadelphia Eagles took T. Higgins. 22, the Bills took Yitur Gross Matos. 23, Curtis Weaver went to the Patriots. 24, the Saints took Mecky Becton. 25, the Minnesota... Mackay Bo- Becton. Mackay. As if that's the first time you're going to drag me up. There's loads of errors <laughs> in there. At 25, the Vikings took Christian Fulton. 26, Lee took for the Dolphins DeAndre Swift it's Andre Swift the D is silent alright <laughs> I don't care he's not the best I'm running world on the board 27 <laughs> the Seahawks took Josh Jones 28 the Ravens took Terrell Lewis 29 the Titans took C.J. Henderson although the C and J are silent in that there's a gator somewhere in the room at 30 the Packers <laughs> took Patrick Queen 31 San Francisco 49ers took Trayvon Diggs and finally our boy Ash at 32 took the date took cornerback Damon Arnett for the Kansas City Chiefs and Super Bowl winners I thought I was going to do that cleaner if I'm honest but there's a lot of names in there it's hardly the ta- it's hardly the looks and sounds eh I'm going to redo that in my head later on yeah it's going to be my punishment for getting some wrong no I don't it was awesome I, I said so many thanks for this thanks to Lee Lee has made this look incredible on YouTube, um, yes, sir. which is hard considering you got me, and you always look all right. Like, all right, please, look at me. <laughs> Box fresh. Um, but incredible work with the, the transitions. It looks like a real draft. It, it's just awesome. Um, thanks to everybody who not only participated and volunteered, but showed up on time. 
Um, we only had one lost pick due to a power cut. So uh, that is uh, phenomenal that everybody else turned up on time, ready with great insight, great knowledge, uh, great picks. Um, did, uh, did Adam Warford pick number one for touchdown tips? Yeah. Yeah, well, he's still watching. See, he, is, he is legit the only person who has left their camera on and is still watching. <laughs> Ash is still there, came on at number four, but Adam picked number one and he's still there. Oh, what a champion. So, Max, pro- Ma- you know. Mad props. Mad props. Uh, it's awesome. It's been <clears throat> so much fun to do this. I can't wait to do it again in a couple of months' time. Me either. I know you're <laughs> less dubious because of the editing, but... Um, I'm going to keep you informed how it goes. <laughs> oh, please do. I want to play by play. But it's been great. We've got, the, we've got the combine coming. We've got so many great guests uh, coming on that are going to deep dive this a lot more. But we, I, I, the real idea of this was just to see how the combine, free agency, the media are all going to shape this. And we all do mock drafts and we all see mock drafts early and they get easily forgotten. Whereas we've got a real record here because we're going to have the same people do the draft with in different info with different info and see how much it changes once we've got the full scale of free agency teams needs and everything we'll know a lot more and see how much it changes because i think that's the real experiment of this and then how much of it's media driven how much of it is need and team driven and that's what i kind of want to get out of this so um and i think it's a great experiment to share with everybody so looking forward to it um loads of great guests coming on that are going to really shape our values and and knowledge a lot more and uh you know i cannot wait we see we see where we sit because especially for me as a bucks fan so many different avenues to go down last year was easy it was Devon white at five yeah that was that was pretty much nailed on from uh december that that was the pick and yeah i can't wait for a couple of months to see how this changes because it's going to be real interesting i think yeah and we might have some trades um so people might be picking in different places Okay, let's make it harder for ourselves. <laughs> yeah, exactly that. But it, it, it's a lot of fun. Um, Come in again. And then, yeah, we, we've we got... Uh, I think this will probably be the only episode this week, I guess. Ooh, um, there's a good chance. There's probably a good chance. This will well, be let's it. see how it goes. Let's see how it goes. Yeah, but, we uh, might be back with a Super Bowl review, although uh, there are many good places that you can go and listen to recaps. Uh, got a great guest next week. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Although none of them are this good looking. Ah, You've got a, a thing you're going to drop about uh, the website and something new coming on the website. Yes. So it's not there quite. It's almost, it's like, you know, when you had, no, I'm not going to give it a birthing analogy. That would be terrible. No, it's, it's like um, 75% of the way there. So the shop is almost built. The merch is almost, the merch is ready. We just need the shop to sell it on. And Lee's working double hard to get that done. So when it's done, we will let you know. But it's going to be real soon. Real, real soon. So, yeah. Shout out to our boy Lee behind the glass. He's done a lot of work with this, so we massively appreciate it, man. Murph, I'll chat to you in a little bit. Yes. Rush Nation, for those of you who are still watching on YouTube, appreciate it. Catch you down the road. But as always, until next week, Rush Nation, don't forget to keep rushing. All the spotted.